Who's ready for the Dirt Life Show? Welcome. We are ready for episode 110 of the Dirt Life Show. We are in Phoenix, Arizona at Geyser Brothers uh, Racing, or no, Design, design and, and Development development is what you said. Yeah, Design and Development. <coughs> and uh, we have the notorious Rick and Jeff Geyser uh, sitting here with me. Both of them have been designing and developing uh, winning race trucks for over two decades, which is in- just insane to me to think about. But uh, Jeff and Rick here uh, have created some of the most uh, winning trophy trucks and short course trucks on the planet. Uh, from going 140 miles per hour across the desert, like they just did in Baja this past week, uh, to 90 miles per hour plus in uh, like places like Crandon into the first turn. Uh, these guys have been developing and leading the industry for so long, and uh, for years to come, they will as well. So welcome, Rick and Jeff, to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. We really appreciate you guys having us here. Uh, so I'm Georgie Hamill, and this is the Dirt Life Show. Like I said, it's episode 110, and we're in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, it's really cool to be able to talk with you guys uh, a little bit behind the scenes as well as obviously we have a bunch of questions from the internet, uh, Instagram and stuff like that. So it'll be really neat to kind of get behind the scenes and see what you guys are all about. I'm sure you guys, you know, being two decades into all this stuff, you guys have had quite a bit of <laughs> interviews and things like that in the past. But um, I know the audience really wants to talk with you guys as well. So That's good. Yeah, a lot of changes has been over the last 20 years and Trying to get get things rolling, keep things going. Isn't it crazy how things change like that, though? Do you guys yeah. remember the first time you guys opened the doors of the shop and the first project you had? Yeah, yeah. that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was a long time ago. And <laughs> probably would have if we knew things would have gone this way, we probably would have done things different before. But. Change it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, so welcome everybody. We really appreciate you guys joining us. You guys can hit us up, like I said, with any of the questions that you guys have. Thank you guys for submitting so many questions already. Um, so the highlights of today's show, we're going to, uh, well, actually, first of all, I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. I know you guys went to the dunes, both of you guys, or just? Oh, I went, went to, to Rock Mexico. Point. Oh, you went to Mexico? <laughs> went to the thousand, then he goes, you know, to Mexico, then he goes How back does that work? <laughs> had to take it, get a break. Yeah. <laughs> Get a break by going back. Well, you didn't go down to Baja, though. You went to uh, Puerto Penasco. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of over on the Arizona side. That's yeah. actually where we frequented when we were younger, too. Uh, and we're going to talk about all kinds of things. Um, I know you guys submitted some stuff. We want to talk about pre-runners, uh, how much they've developed. Uh, man, we had a bunch of people asking about that uh, electric truck, so I don't know if you guys can share some stories about that with us. Uh, sure. We're going to talk a little bit about the Baja 1000, some of the stuff that uh, Rick was telling me before the show uh, about Matney's truck and the double engine truck. Uh, I want to ask a couple <laughs> questions about the latest project with the Hoonigans and Ken Block and Jack's Redline and stuff like that. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about RPM. Uh, Justin Smith is going to call in a little bit later from shock therapy. And, uh, he had some questions about like all wheel drive and how things develop in the off-road industry. Um, get your guys backstory a little bit, um, and the progression of off-road, uh, as well as, like I said, get to some of the Instagram questions. So I think we got a pretty stacked show. Uh, another guy that's going to call in that you guys might know is Ryan Edwards from KMC wheels. Uh, so he's going to call in around five 30. Uh, so before we get to all the questions and things like that, I got to say thank you to the whole audience for joining us. You guys are our lifeblood, so please uh, keep uh, hanging out with us, talking to us on social media. Um, you can always check out the show every Monday night on uh, Facebook, YouTube, and now Instagram Live as well. Um, Thursday nights we do a little in- industry insider behind the scenes. Uh, you can check us out if you can't watch it. Uh, you want to stay safe while you're driving to the races. You can check it out on iTunes and just listen to it there. Uh, so that way you're not uh, <laughs> going to crash the trailer in the truck. Uh, so please keep getting interactive with us, like I said. Uh, and the show is brought to you guys by all of our fantastic sponsors. Uh, KMC Wheels, like we just mentioned with Ryan Edwards. Thank you to Ryan and Ryan Guidus over there with e- EFX Tires for supporting the show since day one. Uh, Justin Smith over at Shock Therapy. You can use the code DIRTLIFE at shocktherapyusa.com and save yourself a whole bunch of money. Um, Those guys have been just killing it, going to the dunes, helping all you guys out. Uh, Thank you to one of our newest partners, Motul, for joining us. Uh, They have some fantastic oil and lubricant products that you can check out. Uh, Really good stuff for your side-by-side. Uh, Evolution Power Sports. Uh, those guys do some pretty amazing stuff. They do some tuning software. Uh, your daughter Lindsay works closely with them. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, Todd and all those guys. So thank you very much to Todd and uh, Jacob and everybody over there for supporting the show. Really appreciate it. Zollinger Racing Products. You can use the code the Dirt Life at ZollingerRacingProducts.com. Save a whole bunch of money on any of the products over there. Uh, like we talked about the evolution of off-road, man, they're uh, really helping the evolution of the side-by-side racing and taking a lot of, uh, you know, advice and uh, direction from trophy trucks as well. So the detail is in the – or the devil's in the details. Uh, thank you to the guys over at CryoHeat. Uh, you can get your Pro Mod transmissions, uh, a lot less rolling resistance. They do all kinds of metal treatments. I don't know if you guys have ever seen stuff like uh, the metal treatments. You do it to some. Yeah, there you go. The CV joints and stuff like that maybe. Yep. Uh, and thank you guys over at Solderweld. You can get an off-road repair kit uh, to repair your race or your ride at solderweld.com and uh, use the code DIRTLIFE to save a whole bunch of money. All right. Uh, I get so long-winded with that. So let's start <laughs> with the first question. You guys build <coughs> off-road trucks. How have you guys liked doing that for the past two decades? We have before. <laughs> uh, just a couple. <clears throat> it's been good, just um, especially with the with the competition and the other builders that are that are keeping the game going. So you got to always keep on your toes, try and try and move to the next step, try and think of new stuff. And uh, for a long time, it was we had yeah. it pretty easy. Yeah, we we were kind of one of the. One of the only ones in the game that were doing good, and we just uh, kind of st- stayed with our same game and yep. and kept going. But uh, nowadays, everybody's no going more. faster. Things are getting bigger, more power. But that's exciting, though, for everybody, right? Oh, Especially the sure. end consumer, and obviously you guys oh, it's behind us. The- yeah, it's good. Makes us, you know, like Jeff said, makes us like think about stuff. Makes us work a little bit harder and try to do a better job. But you know. Yeah, well, building race trucks, you guys obviously have a competitive spirit in yourselves, so it's pretty clear that that's something that you guys are passionate about is always staying on the forefront of the business as well. Yeah, need to, or else we'd be spectators. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to give people a little bit of a backstory, you guys have some time behind this, uh, oh, excuse me, behind the steering wheel as well, don't you? Yep. Yeah, I, th- um, I 85 was my first race at the Mint 400. Wow. So... And I've been going to, you know, somebody asked how long I've been going down to Baja. It's been 30, I don't know, 37 years or something we've been going down there. So Man, that's crazy. <clears throat> so, so you're like, how did you how did you know to take this road? I go, uh, well, we've, we've used to race down this road. Yeah, I've only been here a million times. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. So we went down and pre-run. Uh, I went with Scanlon Motorsports Group, Craig Scanlon, and uh, he had, uh, I don't know what you want to call him, but a liaison, and his name is Sharky. Um, and uh, Sharky showed us all of these different things. I mean, he even showed us uh, these things called patayas. They're little, like, tomatoes with spikes on them that come from cactus. It's super awesome fruit. But um, the value that what you're talking about, about knowing the terrain, knowing the different trails, I mean, you don't think about it like if you're if you're a newbie like me and you go down there until you need to know where yeah, you're at, sure. right? Yeah. Like uh, a side road to get a, tr- a chase truck in there or, a, you know, to get the vehicle out if you have some sort of issue or a better place to pit. Like, so those v- things that you're talking about are valuable. so valuable, yeah. man. It's yeah. crazy. There's so many different roads <clears throat> down there and ways to get into different places that you would never – you would never think it's nuts, right? Yeah, um, and yeah, so Sharky, Sharky, speaking of Sharky, he used to help us with RPM. Yeah, yeah, he was telling yeah. me about that, and, and so <coughs> we stay. Guy. Yeah, a lot of good, a lot of good Mexican um, people down there. Yeah, that are real, just real people that are you know want to help and want to go racing and want to. You know, so it's pretty cool to see, and the camaraderie just comes around racing and winning, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it was it was really cool to see, and uh, we actually stayed uh, at the same hotel. I just had a brain fart and couldn't remember it, but we stayed at the same resort down in La Paz, or excuse me, Loretto, yep. um, at as the RPM guys. So um, it was pretty cool to see all that. You clearly didn't make it down there because you, <laughs> you got short trip. Your yeah. your trip got cut short. Um, Let's uh let's just kind of finish up the Baja talk and uh, tell us about your guys' experience at this year's race because it was only a week ago. Well, Jeff had a short one. Uh, I, I was chasing the <coughs> twin engine truck and which they, is the truck right behind us here, right? Yeah, they uh, the front motor were low on oil and threw the rods out the side at mile three twenty two. Oh man! So so that was he only was able to run the rear motor, get out to the highway down Access Road and. Limper home. Loaded it up and headed home. That's tough, man. And, uh, well, it's it's not your guys' first rodeo, but that's always tough for the guys, it's right? T- yeah, and it, it's a it's a bummer. They were doing good. And, uh, 
you know, racing the Legends class, Clyde Stacy and and uh, all the guys that were racing with them and stuff. But it was. Uh, I feel like that class is so cool. Like that's one of my favorites it's a, to watch. It's a, we're in that. That's the bad part. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's good or bad, but you know, we belong in that group. You know, or we're. We're eligible for it. Do we yeah. belong there? Man, you know, maybe, maybe not. Does that mean that you guys are <laughs> going to try to race one of these bad boys or what? I've been racing this one, at the twin truck, at uh, so, usually just the 500 and the 1,000 for the last three, three four years. years. Yeah. So for our audience that's on Instagram, uh, you can't see the different camera angles, but we got a special camera angle that uh, it's not the driver's seat because we didn't have a long enough cord, but uh, we got a, a in-car uh, okay. cam- uh, a camera set up in this actual twin engine truck there. So this is what the uh, the navigator sees or the co-driver sees. Um, maybe explain a little bit about the inside of this bad boy. Yeah. So both the uh, both the Motec dashes on the in the center. Uh, the left one is the the front motor, and the right one is the rear motor. And I uh, can't see it there. There's a little knob uh, kind of in the passenger dash that you can adjust the. The throttle position in the oh, so it's like a it's like a throttle bias kind of yeah. Wow, well, you really? can adjust how how far you want, how hard you want the front to pull, and so we we run the front a little the front tires a little light on the motor yeah, and uh, just push it with the rears, but but you can only drag it along so far, so <laughs> keep them wicked up pretty good, but. Uh, it's pretty cool to see that that technology, like, I mean, that's got to help a bunch in some of the new projects that you guys have been working on, too, um, with, uh, like I said, maybe the electric trophy truck, if we can talk about it a little bit. But it's neat to to just see how many, put it this way, when you guys first opened the shop, did you think you'd build a truck like that? Oh, no. Yeah. I didn't think hey, we were going we to build another, it. Hey, if we had another day, we'd talk that over. But he wanted to, <laughs> he wanted to kill me. Literally, oh, really? Literally. I'm not building it. I'm not working. I'm quitting. Uh, it was out of mind. <coughs> you guys have got to be crazy. Well, it started just real quick. Was Whose idea was it? Was it yours? Clyde's. No, it was Clyde's. Oh, it was Clyde. He said yeah. he put two and motors like, in there? Yeah, he's like, give him his money back. We ain't building that. So, really? But he didn't know. I did a bunch of stuff without – I started it without him even knowing. But then whenever I had two engines and two transmissions bolted sort of backwards to each other, Yeah. What what are you doing? That's oh yeah, you don't. I don't think you want to know. So that means that you guys have to come up with some sort of transfer case that's completely brand new. Like uh, how does it? No, any... it's a. This is. Yeah, I say simplicity wise, the back motor runs the front, and the front motor runs the back. Oh okay. Two, They're all separate. Two separate programs. Well, that's kind of cool. Well, but how it, do you connect them with the bias then? Well, it's just electric that's throttle, throttle position. Oh okay, so computer. So just more throttle to the front <clears> or to the rear, but it just has two turbo four hundred transmissions and. Has two LS3s now. When we first did it, it had <laughs> two diesel. Oh, they Fiat's or uh, they were a Dodge. Uh, the Eco the Eco, Eco Diesels. Oh, because they were a little smaller. Really little. Yeah. V6. <coughs> wouldn't turbo. go nowhere. Well, it was one turbo. Then we twin turboed, and that wasn't good enough. So we supercharged them, and then Jeff testing it, he pretty much just blew up every one of them motors. <laughs> We never even raced it. We blew it. the turbos off. Uh, we, we never blew, raced it. We blew everything apart on it. <laughs> for, it was a great for show for a year. Seven months or yeah. eight months, we tried. Finally, everything. we're like, hey, we're going to go somewhere. we got to put LSs back in it. We went, literally did That's the, crazy. over 1,000 miles right out of the box. Oh, the bottle, right when, right when the you bottle, switched to the bottle, bottle 1,000 1, point our, to point. Was our test. No way. And, and all of a sudden, just. Went, it went just all the way to ten fifty. I think it was, we had was fifty miles to the end. fuel injectors on the rear motor. Well, that's a nice. Both, both motors, both motors, both yeah. motors. And then what happened was the gearbox pretty much broke the sheared off the bolts. Oh, for the and Clyde was driving it, and he thought the transmission burned up. Oh, I see. Yeah. So he he pretty much didn't know because it's just know. revving, right? It's yeah. just ripping. Yeah, revving. Oh, so, man, so he. He uh, pretty much, we just, we didn't know, so we gave up. We thought we didn't have a spare tranny, so we're done. That's insane. It's kind of <laughs> cool, though, to, to figure, I mean, you guys batting your, or bashing your heads against the wall for seven, eight months, and then all of a yeah. sudden you switch. It was that. good. It was, we were excited. Jeff drove uh, first. I think Todd Wiley drove. Yep. Mark Newhand drove some. Then Clyde got a, really, no, that was the last time I yet. raced. Clyde wouldn't get in because he wanted a truck that was 100%. 
Oh. So he's like, he's like, uh, go ahead, you take it to the next pit. He was yeah. supposed to get in after we fixed the fuel <coughs> injectors, and he said, no, you. So I you got Jeff's make sure got good. Jeff's fire suit, and I got in it, and I went to the next pit. The and then Clyde got in and went like a hundred miles, maybe a little bit more, and then it quit. So. Oh man! But we we're like at ten fifty. Yeah, it's so real close. We we're fifty. I think 50 miles yeah. or something from the like finish. That. And that's pretty good, man. Hey, you guys, so, so that's got to be like a victory in itself, an internal no, it victory at it least. Was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, we come back, won two championships with it. So that's even better. Yeah. Uh, you know? Well, and but the foresight, I'm saying, like after ha- going through all that crap for eight months, uh, we had a question come in uh, from John Huppers that said, uh, and he's talking about this year, what part of the course did you think was the uh, roughest this year at the Baja 1000? You know, I don't, I don't know. I didn't pre-run. We just pretty much were support. For uh for red line, yep, and RPM. Um, I just heard a lot of stories about the Fred's tractor trail. That yeah, was, I did yeah. too. Yeah, 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 yeah. where Elliot that Watson had a, that incident. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You make it through that, and you were pretty much good to go. Yeah, that's what we've, everybody said. And we've raced it a lot. There's sections down south that are pretty big whoops for yeah. a while, like that last hundred miles or but whatever. Really, it was. it's like it's all gravy. It's all really fun, good. A lot of roads, a lot of, yeah. you know, but uh, the beach, you know, is always fun. But, but um, really, it was, I, I think it was a good good track. Yeah. It was what it sounded like to me, at least uh, from the people that I talked to. They actually liked the course. I yep. mean, uh, when it's technical like that, you get some guys that are a little on the fence about it. But, I mean, overall, if you make it, like, you got to be right. stoked. Yeah, I think it was good. Yeah. Was good. Uh, <clears throat> so what were some of the highlights that you guys had? Well, for the ride home, I think was our highlight. We <laughs> we uh, lost a turbo in a chase truck. Oh shoot! And so uh, we we don't give up. Um, I told all the guys to go home, and uh, we stayed in Loretto for a couple of days on vacation. Um, really, we didn't. But here's a highlight: Does Dave <clears throat> Mitchell still bring those cookies to the races? He does. Yeah, he does. <laughs> and trust me, we all got sick on them because we eat too many of them. <laughs> They're they cookie. homemade cookies? Yeah, and they're about they're uh, chocolate chip cookies. Like, they're about six, like eight inches pancake. around and about an inch thick. Yeah, they're, it's crazy. They're phenomenal. So you guys are all on a big old sugar <laughs> high the whole yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> so we did um, – everything was good. Really, the race was good, smooth. You know, we had cars up front running all day, and uh, it was just one of them races that, that everything was clicking along. You know, we lost a turbo in a chase truck. We flew a girl – um, there was a friend of a guy that went with us, mm-hmm. his niece. F- she got the turbo from Jeff that I had at the shop, flew to Cabo. She turned it off to one of the guys that goes with us to the races. He brought it to La Paz, and then a race team brought it from La Paz to Loretto. And, uh, you know, we put it on, and we... Drove all the way home. That's so. your own Amazon right there. It's all good. Yeah, we got our own jet. <laughs> That's sweet, yeah, we had man. our own delivery, one day service. You know, that's pretty cool. Um, we had a, a comment come in about uh, battery and electric power uh, and how it's improving. So um, let's see here. So Fabian 007, just wait a little bit when we start talking about the electric stuff, and uh, they'll probably have, uh, answer your question. One of the questions that I had before we get into some of the more technical stuff, though, is I was looking through, uh, well, trying to do my research on you guys, which is pretty much impossible when you're looking on the Internet for stuff for you guys. Uh, I was talking to your daughter, Lindsay, and we just put took a picture of both of you and Rick over here, Jeff, and there's nothing of you guys on the Internet on currently. The cover. Yeah, I mean, like, and I was telling her, I go, when was the last time your dad posted on Instagram? Like 16 years ago yeah, or something? Yeah. <laughs> and Lindsay was, I think the last picture was Lindsay in uh, a little buggy. I don't know what class it was in. Uh, and uh, it says Smiley Motorsports right. on the side. Yeah, and at the Rage at the River. At Rage at the River. So my question was for you guys, what is Smiley Motorsports? They are actually a crane manufacturer and, and crane service that's here in Phoenix. And we we built two 6100s for them and two trophy trucks in session. But uh, actually the trophy truck that, that Jack's raced yeah. was actually Smiley's. Oh, okay. That I, uh, Rob, the one Rob Mack raced at uh, Vegas Torino two years ago. Yep. The one La- uh Abdali won at Laughlin in. Anyway, it's a but truck. I I, been, <coughs> I drove I drove for Smiley for four years or something. Lindsay drove with uh, Smiley's wife Carrie. Yep. So she raced the sixty one hundred, 
and me and Tony raced the trophy truck, and uh, and we Lindsay did it for a year, and I did it for four years, I think. Five but years or something. it's he, pretty cool. Uh, Do you guys like that? Uh, passing the torch kind of thing, you know, like seeing the smile on her face and oh, in, sure. in those pictures that you posted a million years ago. Um, sure. So what I'm getting at here is maybe if you guys got to do a little bit more media stuff, post on your Instagram a little bit more often. <laughs> <laughs> <Do that. laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, the smile on her face though yeah. was like, that's got to be something that's going to live with you guys forever. Well, the whole time from uh, doing the Lucas oil stuff and the kids racing trophy carts and then, and then Lindsay getting in the limited buggy and racing it, and, and uh, she won the the Challenge Cup race they had. She was the only girl out of nice sixteen or eighteen cars, and she won that thing. And and then uh, we kind of st- too busy to keep doing that, <coughs> and we just started desert racing. And then she, actually, she raced. With Carrie and I made Corey ride with her, and he's not very happy about it. <laughs> hey, really? But he didn't like being a uh, co-dog? Yeah, he's trying to – he's ready to drive. He he does a good job driving, and uh, he keeps trying to beat me up. Yeah, it's kind of cool, though. Like, I, I really like that uh, the aspect of it. We always talk about on the Dirt Life show, we talk about camaraderie, and the off-road industry is – is one of a kind. I mean, yeah. like, there's very few, even in motocross, it was a lot less, but um, there's very few motorsports that have that same camaraderie. Um, we were talking a little bit about before the show, um, you know, like the different pit stops and things like that. Like, if you're still around and you can help somebody else, even if sure. they're close to you or going to beat you, you still help, right? Sure. And that doesn't happen in very many other motorsports. So when I see the smile like on Lindsay's face or, um, you know, I haven't known you guys for that long, but when I see these things, it's really cool for me to see that because I respect everybody in the community so much. Yeah. yeah. It's a, uh, it is like a big off-road family that everybody's, everybody's in it for a good time. Yeah. 100%. But also to win, right? Like Definitely that's, to win. That's the main thing that drives sure. you guys forward. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tony Braza said, uh, those guys are bros are some of the, uh, best in the business. Always great seeing you guys at the races, uh, bumped into Jeff at the 400 and, uh, Rick at, uh, <laughs> Valley T at the 1000. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, we cool. saw Tony. We saw you a couple of times. That was good. Did you guys get tacos down there at Valley T then? We didn't. We didn't have time. Everybody was just coming in, but we had, uh, it was all good, you know? Yeah, so. totally. And some of that camaraderie goes back to exactly what he said, man, just seeing those guys and everybody's so pumped on it. Um, Before we start talking about uh, a lot of the desert racing stuff, um, one of my uh, good friends I've known since I was a kid, played in the sandbox with him, is Joe Whining. And uh, so when uh, I knew that Joe was, you know, working with you guys was when I kind of started knowing about short course because I grew up dirt bike racing, but I started knowing about short course probably in 2012 to 14 ish. You know the uh, Casey Curry Pro Light V8 era, like right when that was yep. starting. Yep. Uh, and I think Joe was working for you guys and yep. the Canada team, right? Yep. Uh, and so, what was the whole program there? Because I I love the short course stuff. Um, is that was that something that you guys were dedicated to or were you still kind of doing the off-road stuff uh, we were or? doing the off-road stuff it was just kind of a i had started when did we do the first pro light i don't know i know i know that it was about 15 years of short course we, yeah we built the pro light yeah. a long time ago and then i sold it and bought it back i don't know 10 was years that later. The, one of the esslinger pro lights or yeah yeah, yeah. so when the chula vista was the first Chula Vista when it was racing, when they had the trophy truck races in the, every the t- houses. and Every time Rob Mack tells me a story about this Chula Vista place, I wish I knew about it. Cause it it was really like, it was, inc- oh, it was, incredible. it was like a Crandon, not really, but yeah. imagine that was the out. It was that, the place. That was to, the layout, man. The second was, one at the quarry, big, huge flying downhill. Yeah. And, <laughs> That's the one he talks about all the time. Yeah. So um, how do you think a UTV would do on that track these days? It'd be good. It'd be, yeah. it'd, it'd all be good. It's yeah. probably houses now. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, but it was a great. It was a great. Uh, I mean, all the tracks were good. You know, the Reno track is sort of one of them big ones, and but the quarry was. That's like, one of the oh, post pictures I posted on Instagram. Yeah, was at the quarry. Yeah, really. I oh, gotta look light. through it a little bit better, man. My, I'm stuck doing it research then because I, I I looked at some of those. I couldn't tell where it was though. It's old school. Man, that is super cool. Mm-hmm. Do you like driving that little four cylinder? Yeah, those it was things, class. Those things I look love short courses. 
it's intense. When they when they started turning over to V8s, I was like, they don't they don't sound as cool. I mean, I get the point, but I was like, man, I just love those four cylinders. So when I first started in, in my old Pro Light and S Slinger, and we were just starting, and I I put an automatic in it, and all the <laughs> we went to every, everybody had manual yeah. trannies, and and so I pull up on the starting line next to Rick Huseman. And he's got this. And Johnny Greaves on, on the other side. He's got this fire breathing. Yeah. S slinger. I don't even know what it was. Those Greaves four cylinders were insane. And this thing was. Really? And I'm like. <laughs> 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 uh, off he goes. Oh, but man. I beat him. He blew up his motor. Oh, there you go. Right there. It, r- it runs fantastic till it doesn't, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, so to keep talking about the short course stuff before we move on to the off-road stuff, um, if you guys did it for 15 years, um, a lot of guys have passed through that program, right? Um, yeah. Can you name a few of them? Because I, I obviously know Joe. Uh, that, that worked on it with us? I would say maybe or, worked on it. Some of the notables that dro- drove the vehicles as well. Um, oh, they're in the... Well, cl- clearly Rob Mack. Yeah, Rob, Ricky Johnson, seeing Rick Huseman. Jeff uh, Ward. Jeff Ward. Oh, Wardy, yeah. yeah. I forgot about Wardy. There's, I mean, it was all good names. It was all, you know. That uh, was right when Carl, I started. Pat Clark. Carl yeah. Renazetter. The bald ones. The other yep. kid, Robbie, somebody from Nevada. <laughs> I don't remember his name. That guy that's good at welding? Uh, I don't even know about that, but, you know, he takes good pictures on Instagram, though. He definitely does. No, uh, Robbie's a good kid, and, yeah. uh yeah, we just smoke his ass. And that's all it that really matters. So. <laughs> uh, it is, it is cool that you guys <laughs> that you guys can talk about that stuff though, because so many people came through that program, and I remember uh, being some of my first time seeing guys. Like, I think the first time I ever went to a short course race, Jeff Ward was actually racing, and uh, I couldn't believe. Like to me, there was nothing else like it. Like, was a dirt bike rider, yeah. and then I see these things on four wheels, and I go who the hell invented these things? And now you're sitting right next to me. It was so cool to, like, go through that process in my head before the show. Um, I mean, what even possesses you guys to come up with the idea to make a vehicle that does this kind of stuff? Well, it, uh, it definitely evolved. and uh, Really, after they made, a, they made a spec chassis for the Pro 2s is kind of when we got into it, and it was so all, your, all your suspension pivots and everything were all set, your frame rails. But then you just uh, just kind of open after that. But yeah, so you start moving to, things around. Yeah, but it was all it's like all racing. It was just a long learning process, and we we went through first. We had a we didn't really dodge. have we didn't really have the time. Yeah, for to sure. really test. Like you get, you know, Rob Mack. You he's got um, Jeff has. A thousand laps, let's say, and Rob's got ten thousand. Oh yeah, well, probably even equi- more than that. But and yeah, equipment and on and on, where we would build something and we would stink and rip it up and down the street. Yeah, call and it. Jeff, a day. Jeff would go, man, feels good, man. Let's go, and we <laughs> go out there and you know beat the crap out of ourselves and and uh, work on it all day and all night and all yep. day and all night. We go out there and change it, change it. You know, it. we're running, we're running maybe mid pack, let's say. And then uh, we get some other deals going, and we're trying because, you know, a free motor is the best way to go. Or yep. a free shocks or free train, you know, it's all it's all the best way to go because that's all we could do. So, um, you know, Jeff's brother, Rick, was just a cheapskate and wouldn't spend the money. Exactly. You know? <laughs> but, hey. I was a professional driver. I need to support. But I could tell you this. Like every professional driver we, out there. Hey, this is right. When we bought all the right stuff. We went out and podium first time out. There yeah. you go. It was good. We did. Uh, so you were right, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did. Uh, when Mickey Thompson tires got into it, we. Uh, Joe actually said the candidates were candidate days were the best. Yeah. Tell Joe to get back to work. <laughs> Joe was a big part of our moving forward and trying new good. things, and and he's a, he's a hard worker, still a hard worker. Yeah. But we. Uh, we were trying to get test time, really, to make things work. And yeah. Mickey Thompson wanted to get into it, and so we we were asked by them to help them develop a tire for the short course, and so uh, we ended up getting a lot of laps out at Speed World. And <coughs> really... In, that track was another track that I, wish I, that I wish I could have raced at. That track looks really cool. 
was good. They were they were all they were all. I don't know that we complained about any track. Probably. I'll tell you what, though. Crashed big at that one. Vegas was good. Speed World looked like your neck would just not be feeling those moguls, man. Back and forth going through those things. Hang on and pin it. Yeah. That's the way we did it in Supercross and the whoops, too, man. It's, it was it was crazy for me to see, though, I, and I got to see a little bit of it before it uh, it diminished or, if you know, fell off. Uh, the good old Speed World track, yep. <laughs> so uh, I can't see that far with uh, who commented in, but uh, Ryan Edwards from KMC is going to join us in just a second here. Uh, I heard of Jeff secretly, secretly wanted, wanted to drive, drive a super light. <laughs> oh, shit. <No. laughs> yeah. That's a big uh, no. Well, we, got, we got JW working here now. That Jeff Wyckoff, that he he was one of the mechanics on that thing, and, and we still hear stories about him. But, <laughs> I think uh, he wants to buy some of them, so if you know of any, yeah, contact was, him. Really? Yeah. No. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Ryan yeah, Edwards, worked, KMC Wheels. What's up, buddy? How are you? What's happening? Uh, we're going to put you on the big screen over here so Lindsay, uh, oh, our viewing audience, can uh, check out your pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> That's never fun. <laughs> hey, so uh, thank you for joining us, first of all. Thank you always for uh, having our back over here at the Dirt Life Show. Um, you've, yeah. dealt, you've dealt with uh, the geysers just uh, a couple times, right? Rick, Jeff, and obviously uh, your best friend, Corey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think Rick and Jeff were the best part of all of it. Corey can just stay home. Leave Corey out of it. Boy, you ain't yeah. lying there. Hey, so uh, fun fact. I came to the shop, and I gave uh, all these guys a bunch of the new Dirt Life gear, which I have to give to you and Emily as well. And uh, I gave it over to – who did I pass it to? I, gave it to, I Jeff, gave it to yeah. Jeff, and I go, here, do you got to share it with Corey? He goes, nope, Corey, you didn't get none. <laughs> nope. Yeah, there ain't any left. There ain't any left. the short end. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so, um, you know, being off-road guys, uh, dirt bike guys coming into the off-road scene, what was the first time that you uh, remember hearing or seeing about the Geyser Brothers? Shit. Fuck. Day one, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where I was at, too, is, like, right when you get to the track, yeah. it's like, who are those guys? Who builds a truck? And it was them. Yeah, I think, man, I think anywhere I've been, I've had some involvement with what you guys are doing over there, so... It's cool to uh, to keep moving on, especially with uh, Lindsay and Corey, and keep things moving forward. I think it's pretty rad. Yeah, it is pretty cool. It, it's neat to see that, and that kind of goes back to the whole industry thing, right? Like the camaraderie and stuff. We talk about camaraderie at the races, but what a lot of people don't see that are in our audience is the camaraderie that happens behind the scenes too, the business handshakes that happen, the transactions yeah. that go to complete a trophy truck. The um, Let's just say you put Ryan, you're like, hey, dude, we got this trophy truck. We got a deadline. You got to service the us before you – and he'll make it happen and yeah, get you guys sure. the yeah, stuff yeah. that you need, sure. you know? Like those things are really important, especially in the business. Yep. Well, as you can, you guys can't see, but I think almost every car truck in here and chase trucks have KMC wheels on it. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like we like you or anything. <laughs> no. It's just one of them programs, you know, that, man, when you build, it's like having a geyser truck, you know, whenever you build something good and, and uh, you know, it, it's it's all good for everybody. Yeah, it goes hand in hand for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's kind of what I'm talking about is you, is you align yourself with the people that are going to fulfill and, and yeah. properly, you know, handle their duties. So yeah. it's cool to see. Um, so some of the cool stuff that I've been uh, checking out at the shop, Ryan, that I think you would like is uh, there's a pre-runner over here. I don't know if I'm allowed <laughs> to say who it's for, um, but uh, it's pretty Gucci, man. Uh, so if you guys can't see it, you guys can probably see the front of it. Even the bead locks have the logo in it, dude. Yeah, I'm. Uh, that's pretty uh, next level stuff right there. Except I got to tell you, they're not KMC wheels on it. I know. I knew but that. Other from than day that, one. <laughs> other than that, you know, it's still pretty Gucci. Somebody made them special. It's they're, pretty they're round and they're aluminum. Yeah. Yeah, that that works. Uh, but some of the stuff that they do here at the shop, man, is pretty uh, unreal to say the least. So uh, one place I haven't been actually. You would. Well, you, need, you need to come out and check it out. Yeah. It yeah. All, as it long all, as Corey's not there, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, between, uh, what, 8.30 to 4, you know, just don't show up. No, Corey's, Corey's good. He's, you sure he gets there that early? Yeah, no, he really gets, he does, he does good. He's, he's here 6.30 or 7, and he'll do, he'll go the distance, you know. Yeah, he actually helped me out quite a bit today. I know you guys give him shit, but he was like. Oh, he'll uh, complain all till the end, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he will complain, but he will get you the oh, info you need. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> hey, so have you ever seen either of these guys uh, behind the steering wheel? Um, I've seen Jeff when he raced the smiley truck. Uh, at what race? Do you remember? I think it was Laughlin. 
Maybe. He did love. He did everything for three or yeah. four years. Yeah. Every Couple single years. race? Like, how was that? Yeah. Coming all, to work all, all sore all or what? That's the desert race. Nah, it makes you feel better. Yeah, it gives you a yeah, little bit of energy. you want to go to work. And my, my back actually feels better after I race. Have you loosened it up a little bit? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should Stretch take your out. advice and go start doing that again. Should. It's good therapy. Just like yeah, a chiropractor. Just like a chiropractor. It's just, you got, you know, it costs half a million bucks, you know, or more. Hey, so, <laughs> Ryan, since we're uh, big off-road guys but big UTV guys, um, do you think that these guys would like to race a UTV or you think they'll stick with some of their own equipment over here? Hey, we raced Class oh, 9. Do, Jeff raced Class like 9. It. When? Yeah, that, I think a UTV is almost faster than a 9 these days. Yeah. 80, ni- 90, 90. When she was born. Early 90, 90s. 95, 96. Her first race was – her her first race was – she was, and you're talking about Lindsay because we Lindsay. we don't have a camera oh, angle yeah. back there. We we should yeah, have Lindsay yeah. walk back here so that everybody two knows. Two or three, uh, two or three weeks old in my first class nine race, and it was here in a local race outside of town. Whoa, uh, really? Canyon Raceway, yep. Oh, I remember that place. Yep. Yeah, that was a cool dirt bike track. You would actually really like that. They had this thing called Suicide Hill, Ryan, that you would yep. just jump down the hill. You could just send it all the way to the bottom and just float down. It was rad. So we raced motorcycles um, also. Yeah. Tried to, yeah. We didn't do very good, and we didn't do it very long. But because we were, I think we were smart. <laughs> they say, you know, with age comes a cage. We got that yeah. early. Yeah. Well, I can uh, definitely. We did. Back. We did that on eighties. The suicide hill thing. I used to smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that wh- was so long ago. I don't even remember. Hey, but Ryan. Yes. It's it's like you always say, winners win, right? They do. I mean, we keep winning uh, as long as we're out there That's every it. day. Every day. So uh, I can definitely agree with what you're saying, though, Rick, because if I hadn't raced dirt bikes, I wouldn't be limping around like a penguin. Uh, so. yeah, it happens. It <laughs> yeah, happens. You know? It definitely does. Uh, it could be worse, right? Yeah, 100%. I, uh, so, Ryan, another thing that I was going to ask you, and we're going to talk to Justin at Shock Therapy a little bit about this later, is um, the progression of off-road. So, like I just said, you know, and I asked you before, is when was the first time that you saw these guys? And you said day one, right? And so now it's day, well, two decades later for them, probably a decade decade later for us what do you think about the improvement or the progression in the off-road world i mean it's like i saw a video the other day of two trophy trucks i think it was a 2008 and a 2021 trophy truck next to each other oh, yeah, it was that Andy video. yeah so you saw that too to me that was yeah. mind-blowing i don't know yeah. if you guys got yeah, to see that sure like so what do you think about the it's, progression i think it's wild that that like the geysers for instance can build something um, and still be 15 years old or 20 years old and out there getting on the podium. Like, yeah. Cameron just got third. Uh-huh. Would never be like that. Yeah. Cameron <laughs> killed it at, at the thousand. Yeah. Right. Place so I, I think that's, what's rad about what you guys are doing. You're building something that lasts and that's, you know, the technology is there and you guys are using it and it's li- letting it go for 20 plus years at this point. Yeah. I think, I think that video, the difference there was really parts like, like yeah. uh, you know, say the, the old Robbie truck, very hard to get to the finish line. You know, a new truck that's, that's really just has better parts. It's about the same width, the same length, the same height. Might weigh a little yeah. bit more on and truck. on, but everything is bigger. Got it. Just like literally from the, the brakes to the, the wheels to the, maybe not bigger, but... You know, we use reliability. All, we, use all, and we use all forged wheels now mm-hmm. instead of a cast wheel. Yeah, it's right. just we're going, we're going faster, we're going harder, we're going longer. Uh, with shock technology, <coughs> shock technologies. Yeah, shocks, wheels, brakes. Of course, all wheel drive. Of course, you know. I remember that one of the motor guys told me, "Do you think you have enough power?" And we we had <laughs> we had like seven hundred maybe. For all wheel drive, you mean? No, for just a motor. Oh, like, in general. Yeah, five, six, eight, ten years ago. You know, hey, do you should think we should build a bigger motor? I go, yeah, I think we should build a bigger motor, but we have enough power, okay? We don't need to, you know. Well, now we're pretty much over a thousand now. That's crazy. <clears throat> and and you know, there's guys that get in these trucks and go, man, I wish I had another hundred or two. You know, so it's. To me, that's phenomenal, though. And but I do, I do think it's cool to understand that, though. Like, 
Uh, UTVs are kind of on the same progression, and this is one of the things that I wanted to talk about in parallel with Justin from Shock Therapy is some of the shock technology, some of the reliability of things. Like for me to see um, an all-wheel drive truck, even a two-wheel drive truck, go as fast as it does through a 1,000 miles of the roughest terrain on the planet and cross the finish line with little to no issues. Yeah. Is right. fun, like that it's blows easy. my mind every time I think about it, and other people might think it's easy, but it, I I can't fathom it. It's not yeah. building them every day. When I go testing them, I test every truck first, and and uh, it comes down to that that where we go test, it's like how how much faster can we go? Right. How much harder can we hit that ditch? How much f- harder? You know, I mean, we got to stop. We're going faster. We need better brakes. We need better steering. We need better motors, better yep. trannies, better, bigger fuel tanks to go further. <laughs> I don't know what the average was, but say Rob and Luke did it in 20 hours and something, 1,227 miles. So That's insane. That's, like that average speed is, yeah. is blows my mind. Uh, yeah. So uh, Max Eddy commented in, Ryan, you'll like this comment, or uh, it wasn't really even a question. Uh, we posted on Instagram some questions for these guys. Max Eddie commented in, I want to race their truck. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Tell, but nothing tell else. Max, <laughs> hey, tell Max that we need to settle Put up. Me into. We need to settle up from the Bay of L.A. Um, transaction. Oh, there's a, some, is he on here? Uh, he'll listen to it, I'm sure, at okay, some point. Max, you just remember, when you settle up with that, <laughs> then we're good to go. So he, he's, he's, the only, hey, he's the only one that knows what it is. It was, I think, 11 o'clock at night probably. Oh really? Just me and him talking and made a little deal, and so like Ryan said, he's got to sell his debt. Yeah, <laughs> sell his debt. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Max uh, is good people. Yeah, exactly. Um, what's one of the questions be, that you guys that you have for him, Ryan? Before we let you go, buddy. Um, shit. What's next? Electric. You guys gotta have some big stuff coming. Electric. I like electric. That. Oh, I saw that at SEMA. A new all-wheel drive. New all-wheel New drive electric. electric. Uh, we got uh, exactly? yeah. well, the car. The, the car is easy to build. It's the right. controls that they've been really working on for uh, the computer stuff. Really, they've been working on it for two years now. Okay, um, off and on, and we're really close to like um, the next truck on the fixture will be that truck. Crazy. Um, we got three other trucks in the works, and we got a new all-wheel drive that we're getting started on. So, so we, besides the electric, yeah, a new all-wheel drive. So, um, there was a couple questions that came in, and since we're talking about the electric trucks, since uh, Ryan started mentioning uh, what was next, is um, how about the battery life, and like, what are the things that have come through the process of you guys going through the last two years? And you don't have to give away any secrets, but um, <clears throat> tell us what the the path is to the success of that vehicle. Uh, well, number one is batteries. Yep. And yep. Uh, battery technology of what I know, we're not the electricians and we're not part of that <laughs> part of it. But right. Race truck Batteries goers. have went from, uh, imagine a, a C battery to a 9 volt to now to a battery that goes in a, a impact. Yeah, like a lithium ion battery. That technology yeah. right. is now, um, you know, there's hyper cars with, with stuff that we're going to be using. Yep. There's, uh, um, uh, you know, the battery packs, it's, it's not like a thing that you go buy. It's a build it every little section of that. Yeah. That battery costs two to 300,000 bucks. Yeah, I can only one, imagine. One battery, and we'll have three, plus we got to have spares. To yeah, change so out. fun fact that uh, people might yeah. not know. it. may be able to change them out, too. Yeah. yeah, like hot yeah. swap ones uh, that people may not right. know. It has nothing to do with off-road industry, but a uh, Toyota Prius battery is just a bunch of double A's linked up together. It's pre- That's what they all do. <laughs> it literally is, yeah. and it's just a, a, a hundred a thousand bunch of, them. of them. Yeah, just linked up together. But there's also there's there's um, um, cooling. There's thermal stuff that goes with it. There's, there's uh, you know, it's 800 volts you're playing with. Woo-wee! So temperature is huge. I can only imagine. In and out, there's, you know, but... Uh, and so that... It, it's been bad for the electric off-road market because of yeah. what's happened with the couple, two, three people that have tried it. It all Longevity. They all failed. So uh, trying to get somebody to um, spend a bunch of money to do this is hard. Right. 
Um, so anyway, it's a uh, I mean, hyper. I just was at NASA yeah. like a week ago. Yeah. This is crazy, but kind of along the same lines. They have are almost done with a self-driving UTV oh. off-road. Oh. And they had the whole back seat. It was a four-seater. The whole back seat was a, a battery that powered like just the modem for this self-driving oh, equipment. It was crazy. Oh, oh. Hey, maybe you guys yeah, should talk to, to get Ryan to link you up on the yeah. business transaction with NASA Give over there. NASA dude. Involved. <laughs> let's, go, let's go to the moon with this trophy truck. Yeah. Let's go to the moon with this one. And could you imagine having NASA on the side of that bad boy crossing the finish line of the Baja 1000? Yeah. <laughs> oh, these dudes had no idea. They're like, oh, yeah, we're going to go. We need even to put... go over rocks and bumps and stuff. And I'm yeah. like, oh, you guys are way off. Uh, you don't even know. <laughs> yeah. No, no. But, yeah, so the technology of the batteries is, like, went crazy. Yeah. You know, so um, anyway, stuff like that to make it go is, you know. The crazy part, the controls are the part that's uh, that will take the longest. So, uh, yeah, it's cool. It's cool to see, man. Like I love to hear. To, we could talk about this one subject for days and days and days. Uh, yeah. Electric's crazy, man. It really is. All right, Ryan. Well, we really appreciate it, man. Uh, please Thanks. tell. Gunner and uh, the wifey that we said hello and uh, thanks for joining. I gotta go back upstairs. They're yelling at me right now. So hey, thanks, right. thanks for everything yeah, you guys. Fun. Thanks for everything you guys have done for the uh, off-road market. No, thank you guys. You guys keep killing it. Thanks for picking on my kid. Hey, <laughs> Keeping him in line. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> later, thanks, guys. Thanks, yeah, dude. We'll see you later. Uh, we had a couple uh, comments come in. John Lewis said uh, the truck that Travis Williams is racing is an older chassis and it still kicks ass. Uh, I don't. When did you guys build that? Put the mic a little closer, Rick. That was uh, Banning. That we built for Lee Banning. So it's probably shoot six, six, eight years old. Probably. Oh, okay. So it's got a few miles on it then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, actually, he's been doing good. It's that's a good a, driver. That's a good uh, overall audience question. What is the truck that you think has the most miles on it that you guys have done? Oof. I mean, that's got to be a. We're we're on truck seventy. Seven now. Seventy five, six, seven. Yeah, so seventy seven. Dang, that's and a pretty good number too. They're all still alive. Really? Yeah, everyone still race. So I saw some video. Vildosla was, he was pre running in his, in his guider truck. That was the second truck we built. The first truck Cameron still still has. Nice. Oh, is that the one that he pre runs in or no? Yeah. Nice. That truck actually looks like it handles fantastic. There's still every it's one good. of them. You know, McMillan still have one. Andy does. He uses it as a pre-runner some. Um, but yeah, they're 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 all still alive. Uh, yeah. G Lopez Z Rubio. I don't know who that is on Instagram. It says, uh, "Is the door with my name on it still on the wall?" Yeah. Is that one of the doors over here? Uh, I don't That's know if we have a camera angle with that can actually see it, but uh, it actually down there. it's clear down in the corner. Let's see if we can see it over there. So it's way <laughs> over there, buddy. Uh, so maybe they do have it. Uh, we'll go through a couple of the uh, uh, other questions. Uh, GXRDO is cool. Asked, what motor do they have in the TT? And I think that's probably uh, more of a general question. Like, what's the standards that you guys use? Uh, mostly all custom made, like. Ford or Chevy. Okay. Um, but not really Ford or Chevy. Right. You know, like a Brodix or a Dart or a, right. you know, whatever. And then they're built as a four. You know, we've had motors from, uh, say, 450s to now they're 580s, big Ooh. blocks. Jeez, man. So just most, a conventional. Most all the new trucks have big blocks in Yeah, them. conventional small block or big block, but everything aftermarket. Have no. you, so you guys haven't done very much short course stuff in the last years, huh? No. So when Lucas stopped, you guys stopped? Yep. We stopped like the, the year if, before. Year yeah, before. I was going to say because I didn't see your guys' faces for a while out there. So yep. Yep. Uh, what motors were in those trucks? Same kind small of. Same block, small that, block. That was a, a weight Power thing. So Power to yeah. weight. Yep. Get as much torque out of those things as possible. Yeah. Um, okay. So we got a couple more questions <clears> coming in. Uh, yeah, let's see. Elias Hananovalis at KMC Rocks. Uh, what is the steel cab Dodge? In the, oh, that's a Class 8 truck, isn't it? That's old Walker Evans Class 8. Jeff used that's to work for I, him. I, I worked there when they started racing that truck till we opened our shop. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we got a couple more questions here. Um, let's uh, 
I don't know. I don't even know how to like make this question uh, <laughs> normal. Carlos Gomez, eight eight three, says, uh, "When are geysers? Will they put a winning driver in their trucks like Brenthal did?" I don't know what that actually means because I don't know much about Brenthal. Probably Kyle Jurgensen. Okay, he's been killing it. Yeah, and uh, oh, he did do good this year, right? Yeah, didn't he win sure. a championship? Yeah, yeah he's but, done good. Uh, uh, we have just a lot of. We don't have a. a Sponsored driver, per se, but well, so got a lot of good drivers. My answer to that question is a little different than yours. You have a ton of winning drivers in your trucks. Um, they all operate their own different programs. So when I hear a question like that, I think there's uh, many different ways to answer it, obviously. But the main way to answer it is that most of the people that operate an off-road racing team do it on their own. Yeah. They do it on their own budgets. They do it at sure. their own team and their own program and things like that. You guys provide the tool set to be able to go out there and to win the races sometimes, you know, for yeah. RPM and other people. Um, but uh, it's not the same. Maybe this guy's thinking more of like uh, F1 or NASCAR or Supercross or something okay. where yeah. you just show up and drive, right? right. Um, so I think that's a, probably a, a little bit more thorough of an answer to it. Um, Brent how, about, Ball, how about the guy that won the Baja 1000? Yeah. He wasn't in our car, right? but he has one of our cars. Yeah, exactly. He'll be at the Mint 400 next week. Yep. Rob, so, Rob Mack. Yeah, I actually – I think I, that's – Probably the best you can get. Yeah, I don't think there's really. <laughs> you know? We were actually talking about. Uh, we talked with Rob actually for uh, a Baja 1000 recap on Tuesday, and uh, um, there got to be probably 50 people just kept going. Man, the goat is so good in interviews, and I was like, the goat. Yeah, yep. Yep. he's definitely one of them. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then another question that I think they probably weren't paying too much attention is all-wheel drive trophy trucks and when. But you guys have already started that process. Uh, I believe we. I can't say we originator brought the all-wheel drive back, but we built three of them before anybody, and we won championships, won races. Yeah, absolutely. So it's we're we're uh, we're still building them, and we're gonna come back out with a new weapon and uh, put somebody real good in it. So and uh, SoCal sixty one fifty said uh, diesel trophy trucks. We kind of already went over that a little bit earlier in the show. Um, diesel trophy trucks are cool. That was one of the things that you guys worked on, but you guys had a lot more uh, uh, reliable engines with the LS motors, huh? Yeah. For sure. Uh, average cost uh, and upkeep of a 6,100 truck. So new, they're um, 400 plus. Mm -hmm. Depending and on what you want. Yeah, depending on all the bells and whistles. And um, upkeep is really, uh, like you say, you know, a Formula One team to a... Uh, uh, um, yeah, know, a budget team. Well, budget or maybe this guy's working, you know, has a real job. And, you know, so it all depends on you could win with anything. Um, it's just how you how you do it. Yep. So yeah. it's uh budget wise, you know, you're gonna spend a, a hundred bucks a mile. Yeah. In the sixty one hundred. Um. So if you went to the Mint four hundred, it's gonna cost you, um, you know, say, fifty grand to a hundred grand, depending yeah. on how you do it. Yeah, and depending on what's your what you spend the money on. Some people yeah. go real extravagant with their hotel rooms. Put it that way. So yeah, uh, or the paint job. Yeah, or whatever it is. You know. Yeah, exactly. Every bits and pieces. You know. Well, I mean, look at the Hoonigan program. They spend a lot of money on the media and on the on the liveries and things like that because that's yeah. what they're you know care about for their media program and stuff. The Dune and Destroy guys um, are asking a little bit more about the electric truck and uh, when it's going to start coming to fruition a little bit more. Can you guys give us any? Uh, understanding of that so we got uh the guy jake at uh hypercraft he has the we have the motors um or i'm sorry the motors are ordered uh the battery packs are designed the um uh the car is the next car on the fixture um and literally it's the main thing is is all of his uh you know i say supporters of uh you know the people that are going to be doing stuff for the truck right. is um, is coming about pretty quick. We we hope to be running in a year or less. That's pretty cool. So, That's like I said, we have RPM started it about five years ago. Um, we got a lot of information. We got a lot of stuff going, and and it's um, um, you know, so we just. Uh, we have all the info now. We just got to put it all together, and of course, the budget for that is, uh, I say, eight to ten times more than a regular trophy truck. Yeah, well, especially in the prototype stages, right? Yeah. 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 So I can only imagine. Uh, you know, they come over here and they got you know a meeting is not like 
me and Jeff and one other guy going, yeah, we want KC lights, and, man, we want a two-wheel drive, and we want Fox shocks. It's like they bring 10 people over here and go, this guy is in charge of the um, this. Right. This girl's in charge of this, and this is, you know, so it's like, you know, literally it's a, it's a bigger package. A board of directors. So Pretty <laughs> so much, figure, yeah. 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 Uh, but that's kind of the way that the development is, man. It's cool to see because it makes me understand how much effort people are putting into the progression of off-road racing. Yeah. It's pretty rad. Do you, sometimes you guys sit down and go, good God, this is not what we expected. Well, uh, like I said, from the, be- from the beginning of of building them and, and how much they've evolved and – and the other builders that are getting into it and how much everything in the whole thing is evolving and with the electronic shocks now and the four-wheel drive and the different differentials and a gearbox tranny and it. it's like it's never ending yeah really when we what? first started the four-wheel <coughs> drive was was uh i went touring around all the different shops manufacture stuff looking at the components and every everything was really based off of their short course yeah and you know we're doing this and it's you know we're landing 9,000 rpm wide open and it's yeah, quite a bit different that's not even a qualifying run and yeah the desert, i feel like the mechanisms so. have to be completely different oh yeah. it, it it is now yeah <laughs> it everything it was like jeff's way like bigger and way more let's use this this is the biggest best thing they got this is the biggest is okay let's build it well now it's come down to that I think every part we put in there we is the rebuild. gears in the transfer yeah. case had to be this wide, not this wide. Yeah, exactly. And the differential had to be this big, and then now it's this big. And yep. the front differential was, you know, we went through that. Break the front, break the back. Break the front, break the back, break the, you know. Yeah, just in the all-wheel drive stuff, I remember Joe telling me, I mean, he's like, dude, we've been working on the transfer case on these all-wheel drives for like a year and a half, like, and it's still not ready yet. you said yet. about the cryo stuff? Yeah. We've done every process, and knock on wood, um, Matney's all-wheel drive, um, I can't say we've never had a problem with it lately. But, but it's been pretty we, reliable. We have two years. We have, uh, say, two to 3,000 miles on it, besides this Baja 1000, which was 1,200. Look who just joined us, Max Eddie himself. Oh, Max. Hey, Max. You missed it, buddy. We, yeah, we I answered. I had a your... ride for you, bro. Yep. But you weren't on the show. <laughs> what does he have to do? <clears throat> no, it's too late now. Oh, we got to settle up from our yeah. uh, Bay of L.A. Highway turnoff transaction <laughs> at 1130 at night. So, Max, he's not letting any of the audience <clears throat> know. It's just you and him. That's that I have to figure this bad boy out. Yep. Uh, let's see here. We got some guys asking if they can come into the shop and be your welder. Uh, he TIG welds in, like, aerospace stuff. I would suggest just coming down here and offering your services and seeing how you how you do. Just like we tell everybody on the Dirt Life show, if you ever want – to be a part of an off-road racing team or get your uh, uh, hands dirty behind the steering wheel at some point, the best thing to do is always go lend a hand first. Offer up your services and let these guys see what you guys can do. Uh, this one's from one of the employees. Name three things in the modern off-road racing. I get, consider you guys employees. Three things in modern off-road racing. Yep. A lot of fuel. A lot of uh, good help. Yep. Um, things it takes. I would like to throw one in there. A badass truck. And a good truck. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> here's a really good one that aligns with the stuff I was giving you crap for about on Instagram. Why don't you guys post more builds? <laughs> we probably should. How about that? Yeah. Uh, we know a girl that can help out with social media. She does. Lindsay does. Yeah. She does help us. For I think, sure. I think she no matter... Help. Put more hours in, evidently. Well, the thing is, though, is I, no matter what on social media, you're never going to get it right. No. Like, it doesn't matter what, yeah. you, get, what you do. So um, it is cool that people do want to see this stuff, though, more because it, it shows you how well you're doing in your business when people are asking to consume more, sure, right? Sure. Um, I can hire her to do my social media, too. There you go. That'll I'll, be pretty I'll good. Update my <laughs> Who's gonna, who knows what's going to be <laughs> on there? <laughs> Pictures of her. Pictures uh, of Luna. Yep, exactly. Uh, nobody can get enough Luna, though. Uh, Gen 6, four-wheel drive, when? When what? Which part? That's it. That's the question. When's the all-wheel drive? <laughs> Gen 6, four-wheel drive. Yeah, oh, all-wheel drive. Gen yeah. 6, four-wheel drive. That's yeah. what the new truck will be is a G6 all-wheel okay. drive. Got it. Yep. 
it's it'll be that platform um, when it, when it comes out. Oh, here's a good question. I actually <laughs> like this question from uh, Benny in Wonderland. Uh, why do you guys TIG weld your chassis over MIG weld? Does it create a stronger weld? Uh, I believe it is stronger. It also looks better. The one hundred percent. And you can control it. Is the the real? There is really good MIG welds and not so good MIG welds. So yeah. for safety and you know, um, I I believe that it's it's a stronger, better, nicer, lighter, yeah, and more formed weld. Yeah, I agree. You have to take <coughs> your time more to do it, right? For sure. Uh, so it creates a, a lot more a, of a reliable product at the end. You can end. see you can see what you're doing when you're MIG welding it. You're yeah. just putting metal down. You're hoping it's penetrating. Yeah, exactly. Shooting from the hip, so to speak. Um, <laughs> Nicole DeCole said, uh, Geyser has the best Christmas parties. <laughs> 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 that sounds pretty fun. We've huh? known her for Shoot, 20 years or more. Yeah. So she likes coming to the Christmas party? She does. Yep. <laughs> does she get to eat any of the cookies like you guys got she down does. in Baja? Dave, yeah, they, Dave brings cookies, so you got to come. <laughs> that sounds like yeah, a pretty anybody good... Anybody come to Christmas party, man, it's a great time, and uh, you get to see all the stuff and uh, you know check out everything. Uh, Richard HPR Harding says, uh, one of my shops to work with, uh, one of my favorite shops to work with, the whole crew is great. Um, you guys do have a pretty fantastic crew that you guys work with over here. Yeah. yeah it's good people. Yeah. Um, well, and you guys got a. Uh, actually, we have a couple more questions here. Uh, another one for about the four wheel drive. When are you guys jumping on the four wheel drive bandwagon? I think you guys should probably listen to the show and check out their social media a little bit more because they have already had that stuff. Uh, any plans for an all wheel drive? Another question. We want to know about the electric TT, and you already kind of went over that stuff too. Um, I'm sure you guys are going to get tons and tons yeah, of questions it's, about it's, that. You know the when uh, Jake took that to the SEMA show. I've gotten uh, 50 to 100 calls. Oh, I could only imagine. So more info. Once we start building it and getting stuff going, we'll we will uh, we'll keep everybody posted. And um, I would probably suggest that. maybe if we're talking about social media, I would probably slow that down on social media until because otherwise you're gonna get oh, yeah. bombarded no, yeah, with yeah, all yeah, that yeah. stuff, man. Yep. That stuff's crazy when you if you release something like that out there. Um, it's it's so cool to me to see the progression of the off road stuff, and we're gonna talk, like I said, with Justin from Shock Therapy a little bit about this because uh, he knows a lot more about this stuff than I do, um, so he can talk with you guys a little bit better about it. But being on the forefront has to feel pretty cool. It's good. We've been we've been uh, we've been up front for a long time, and we're um, you know I think we're slacking maybe a little bit on the all wheel drive timing, but uh, you know we've had a good run for. 20 something years. I I don't even I, I wouldn't say that you guys are slacking at all, man. This no, is we're still right there and and literally it's just uh like the one guy says, "Hey, how come you don't have a, you know, the best driver out there or something?" but it's um we've had them and we've been through it and we we know what it takes and you know, today we don't have that going right now, but some of it is a customer base, so the uh most of the drivers that have the other all-wheel drives are Customers that we've had that wanted a different flavor. Right. So and that right. happens a lot. I mean, like, look at the new Supercross season. Jason Anderson <laughs> yeah. moves from Husqvarna to Kawasaki. Eli Tomac moves from Kawasaki. I mean, everybody just wants a just new a some. new change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I like what you and Rick are, the mindset that you guys have is, Rick said, you know, we've been slacking on it. He, truthfully, you haven't. Um, no, but we haven't been slacking. But, but, but that's the mindset that you guys have because you right. want to push forward and right. you want to keep keep uh, keep that edge. So I really think that's a good way to operate a business in general. Yeah, you got to gotta try and keep on top of it and keep moving forward. Yeah, 100%. Um, all right, so we're going to go to a commercial break, uh, and then we're going to have Justin Smith come on in about uh, 10 minutes here. But uh, before we go, um, I just want to know how long Geyser Brothers has been around. It's been two decades, but when did you guys start the business? Uh, 90... Four ninety five, right on. So it was a stupid thing. Was it at the same location, or is it a different spot? No. Well, it was in his backyard. Was oh, the there you go. Was nice the house. And I uh, had a little shop there, and then I was doing stupid stuff, and uh, a Volkswagen bug that I was working on fell on me, smashed my head. Oh crap! Broke my skull. Ugh. Um, I was in the hospital for. For uh, four or five days, and uh, um, 
nothing good, but I did walk out. Oh, good. Thank and God. And then I don't remember what I did or if I called Jeff or what. Oh, uh, I, I was uh, <laughs> actually oh, he at came. the Baja 500. Oh, man. And got a message at the hotel when I finished the race. That's when I was working with Walker Evans. Mm -hmm. And I called the number, and it was uh, intensive care. And I just asked if there's any guys are there. And <laughs> my sister said that you need to come home and that Whoa. he's in the hospital. And Rick's dead. So I, <laughs> I was. Really, I came, I came home, and, and I went back and got my stuff and moved down here. And I he was working for... Danny Fodrell and Buggy Buggy World, and I uh, I went to work for Danny, covering for Rick while he was dead, and then we just started working out of his backyard. Then he told around. no. Then I remember this day he came and Lindsay was just a little baby, and he would bring her, and uh, he told me, um, "I'm coming to work for you," and I'm like, "What?" You know, and he's like, "You got to pay me." I don't remember what it was, but 400 bucks a week or 300 bucks a week. I still make the same thing today. <laughs> <laughs> he don't make much more. Well, those you know? story those stories um but I'm like how am I going to how am I going to pay you for $400 a week <laughs> when we don't have anything yet? <laughs> yeah. No, I had I had plenty of work. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, it was uh it I overran the whole neighborhood and uh had trailers parked at neighbors' houses and I think at one point we had nine. Yeah, uh, nine I don't know. I can't see uh, Macy Edmund. I don't know what it yeah. what it is. It says I remember watching them build. A, yeah, yep. uh, build those <laughs> things out at the back of your mom's house. That's cool, yep. man. Those I love those stories, man. Just like the computers nowadays, you know, built them in garages and now they're yep. taking over the world, right? Yep. Yep. So it's got to feel pretty good. Um, all right, guys, we're gonna go to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. So all you guys on Instagram, uh, just hang tight. Here at the Mint 400. My name is Kerry King. I'm with the OTSFF Motul Vision Truck. Motul oil is a big part of our race program. I mean, the, the consistency, the, the temperature that it holds, and you know the, the issues that we don't have while we're using that oil is self-explanatory. Motul oil. They've been with us for over 12 years. They jumped on board with us with the uh, 6100 race truck here, and Mint 400, and they've been an amazing partner with our lubricants and. Really, it's, it's allowed us to finish every race in 2019, and we're jet-setting really well here for 2020.
Shock Therapy, the premier UTV suspension tuning company. We test daily with the leading manufacturers in the industry to perfect our shock tunes and race proven components for all UTVs. Whether it's high speed racing or slower trails, we have a suspension tune that is perfect for your driving style. Visit shocktherapist.com to improve your ride today. Zollinger Racing builds the best aftermarket products available. Products for your UTV or snowmobile, including billet radius rods, billet tie rods, billet steering knuckles, billet steering racks, alternator kits, and much more. All manufactured in the United States in-house at their headquarters in Nibley, Utah. Travis Zollinger and his team test in some of the most brutal conditions. Racing in places like the Best in the Desert Mint 400, Ultra 4 King of the Hammers, UTV World Championships, and many more. Visit ZollingerRacingProducts.com and use the code DIRTLIFE to get 10% off your next purchase and join us on social media at Zollinger Racing Products to see our products in action. Zollinger Racing, the best products, period. Yeah, finally, we got Lance from Solderweld in the studio. Oh, Thanks for coming down, bud. Hey, why don't we just record a commercial now? Yeah, why not? It's so good to be here, man. It's been a lot. I'm trying to get down here forever, uh, and uh, I wanted to talk about the off-road kit. Dude, I love those things. I got it in uh, my pack. Yeah, we're running uh, hundreds of uh, vehicles now running them, whether it's a UTV or some guy's got it in a backpack and it was motocross. He's got uh, everything he needs to make a fix right there on the fly, out on the trail, uh, or in the desert, whatever it is. Well, since I've already used one, I kind of know what to use it for, but uh, explain what it does. All right, so let's pull one out real quick. You've got your aluminum rods. Remember, they're rods, right? So, uh, you know, light torch, small torch. You can uh, throw it in there or throw it on the rig with your flux. It decontaminates and cleans like, a, let's say, a radiator. You get a random rock chip runs through uh, as you're racing. You get a rock chip and a radiator. you got to fix it right there or you're yep. out of the race. You can patch it up. Instead you can of patch it up. It's all good to go. Yep, it's just like welding. Yeah, also as well with that, you've got a brake line fix. So uh, with your flux, you can fix a uh, brake line, stainless steel, steel, and then uh, your hop lock, heat absorption putty. So it yep. keeps you from getting burned, number one, as well as keeps the heat from traveling. So uh, it's really, uh, really nice. I've used this not even to fix anything. So it's, that stuff works <laughs> it's, so good, man. Listen, it's easy. It's uh, It straps in nicely so that you uh, have everything you need in one little place and you don't have to carry a big bag in it's the It's like a uh, first truck. aid uh, kit for your vehicle. Yeah, chase trucks have it as well so that, uh, you know, if they need to make a fix on the fly, they can get it done and get it done quick and get you back in the race. Dude, those things are so cool. All right, so it's at Solder Weld on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, SolderWeld.com. Awesome. All right, thanks, bud. Appreciate it. All right, we are back. The Dirt Life Show, episode 110 uh, at Geyser Brothers in Phoenix, Arizona. We're with Rick and Jeff Geyser. Thank you guys very much for hanging out with us uh, throughout. Uh, man, I just love talking about the stories and, like, having all that fun. Like, I, I had so many questions about the different trucks and stuff, but then I was like, these truck stories are uh, stuff that you guys deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, the stories are so much more fun to talk about. So I think we're going to talk about some of the stuff like that uh, after we talk to Justin uh, at Shock Therapy about a little bit of the progression of off-road, if that's cool with you guys. Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's do it. So we'll we'll talk with him and see uh, see what he thinks because he can give us actually a lot about uh, an understanding of the way that the suspension works and 
you know, progression of UTVs and things like that. So it'll be interesting to see what the parallels are with uh, the trophy trucks. Justin Smith, Shock Therapy, what's up, buddy? What's up, guys? How's it going? Good. How are you? Very good. We're doing awesome over here, man. We've been sharing some stories and talking about the Baja 1000. They've been talking about some legendary drivers that they worked with. Uh, everything from, uh, I don't know, uh, which car did you just show me that Lindsay drove? The Class 9 car? That was one I started in. Oh, that was the Lindsay's one you started in? Limited buggy, yeah. All the way up to Justin now having uh, all-wheel drive trophy trucks, and even uh, the newest thing that they're going to have is an electric trophy truck. It's pretty cool to see the progression, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about because you've been on the forefront of the UTV industry progression, so I wanted to see what the parallels were. You know, um, if you don't mind, George, I'm going to sidetrack that really quick. That was a cool segue into what we're going to talk about, right? But I think you guys – can't beat Rob Mack in a geyser truck. Who's got more wins? Who's got more champions than that? Yep. Championships in that. Copy that for sure. Dude, the GOAT is what we call him. Fact. Also, um, the first thing I'd like to say is that um, I've got a ton of stories about these guys. <laughs> oh, yeah? Easy. Been around for Easy. A while. Hey, so maybe we should just. Hey, hey we've known Justin for. Shoot, maybe maybe we should years? maybe we should skip the progression of off road and just go straight yeah. into the stories. That's kind of what I want to talk about. It'd be good. You we wanna... can go back and that one. That's for sure. Maybe we'll come back to the progression. Yeah, we don't have time for that crap. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you deal with it. It's too boring on yeah. a day to day basis, right? Yep. Hey, so give me your Def first good story then, and we'll see where it goes. <clears throat> Definitely boring, but I want to start off by saying that uh, both of these guys are one of the biggest mentors uh, to me in anything that I've ever done. Um, in the past, anything I've ever screwed up, anything I've ever done well, I pretty much, uh, I, I probably came over there and, and got advice from Rick on how to do it right, and I got advice from Jeff on how to weld it right. So uh, when we were short in Chromali, it was like, Rick, help me out. He could throw me a sheet. It was, it was that easy all the time. We were across the street for a little while. That's awesome, man. Yeah. It's that camaraderie you're talking yeah. about, man. Yeah. Yep. Super cool. Yep. At the, at the time, it'd bring over, uh, like, every, any little sand car that we would build and go, hey, man, check it out. And, and Rick would get a, a ride, and that's where I'm going to go with one story. I'm, I, I remember Rick telling somebody else. So I came over uh, and said, hey, Rick, hop in this thing real quick. It's kind of hauls ass, and it was like twin turbo V8 in a, in a, in a sand car. And if we go down the street, and it's a wheelie here and a wheelie there, pretty much all through, I don't know, three or four gears or so. And I dropped Rick off, and it was no big deal. But then, like, Three months later, he's yeah, it was it was a big deal. How it was terrifying. So yeah, it was a big deal. <laughs> um, I think it was more sky than than asphalt in our vision. Yep. Uh, that yep. it was. I was trying to show off because I was trying to impress Rick. Yeah, you you <laughs> trust me, Justin. I can tell you that I remember every bit of that, and uh, <laughs> and it, it's probably still one of the quickest non uh you know i couldn't do nothing about it we were either gonna go or you know crash or die or something you know but, <laughs> Get but a little was, bit of, of course you got to realize we're on a on a commercial street yeah and there's <laughs> cars and there's and we i think we're in fourth gear wheeling <laughs> for yeah. two blocks <laughs> just looking and at the was, sky yeah well it was there was <laughs> sky but it was every gear it was it was a uh, you know one of the cars justin built it was twin turbo i remember every bit of it and i i if i thought about it, i could tell you what color it was but i think it was orange but i don't yep yep candy apple orange and, and yep. flames yep so it was uh it was a uh it was impressive and it was definitely changed the a trophy truck would never do that, just to tell you. <laughs> now, I couldn't imagine, hey, I couldn't imagine the sand cars today. You know, back then, that was 20 years ago, probably. Yeah? Yeah, and that was that was probably 700 horsepower in, in a 20, Yeah, you know, your cars were bigger and a little bit heavier, but do you imagine a... Something with a bigger motor and a better gearbox and bigger paddles. Oh, and, like some of those Tatums or Racers yeah, or something. Dude, holy, those things are yeah, so sweet, man. Silly stuff of, you know. But uh, They're having some horsepower wars on that stuff now, and these yeah. guys are 100, 190 mile an hour in the sand. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yep. Yep. Holy crap, really? That yep. fast? Yeah. Yep. They show yeah. it. There's somebody that showed like a 170 or 80 miles an hour on the Good GPS. Good God, really? I think they had it in their plane. And then they just showed it. No, I'm just joking. But I was gonna say, dude, that I is think 140 or 150 in a sand car. That's still insane. It's not. It, oh, yeah, 192. It's, Kenny is saying. 
Um, yeah. It is not say that, that, that whatever that car is, is going to get wadded up when that happens. Hopefully that, yeah. that happens. But the, you, you say that, you know, that trophy truck wouldn't have done what that sand car did that day. Well, that's like the easiest thing to say. The one thing that the sand car will never do is what a trophy truck does like a hundred yeah. times over. Yeah. 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 And yeah, that, yeah. And, and safer um, so, and safer. Exactly. Exactly. You know? So or it's built, you know, it's built to do that. <clears throat> Taking <clears throat> mentality in racing, both in the structure, design, engineering, and team approach, um, is kind of where a lot of the UTV stuff is going now. And uh, to get back to your original point, uh, yeah. George, sorry to sidetrack you with that. No, absolutely. I mean, I love the stories more than the uh, professional talk anyways. I just know that we had a lot of people commenting in and stuff, just asking about with the progression of the off-road industry in general. And I think um, for the most part, I mean, we heard it in the questions. How many times did we hear the all-wheel drive and the electric truck questions? I think um, it's just the future, right? Like all-wheel drive and electricity, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just the way that it's going to go. So um, let's go back to some of the stories, though. I mean, you've had so much interaction. You guys are both in Phoenix, Arizona, Shock Therapy and Geyser Brothers. Um, you guys have both been in the off-road industry for a long time. Um you guys even test out at a play. Jet, Justin tests the, the UTVs. I mean, he tests them all the time. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we see him out there half the time. Yeah. At, <laughs> and that's what I was going to say. At Geyser Loop is what they call well, it. I really don't know how that got named that. Of course, yes, we tested out there for it's 20 probably because you guys but, are out there all the time. But it's, uh, you know, it's good. It's good, you know, for, for everybody. And it's a great place for a little test and. Hopefully you do it safe. You know? Hey, well, I agree it's a good for testing. Justin took me out there. It's not a good place to drive. Like, I didn't Holy have fun. Crap, like, oh, my God. All them UTVs are just tearing up our trophy truck. Ju Justin told me, he's like, go around backwards because you're going to oh, get gotta so go mad. Backwards. You got to go backwards. It's way better. <laughs> way better. In a trophy uh, truck, it, it does even matter, too. Um, we, we cheat and go backwards on the loop now just because I don't know. Yeah. You're just asking for your, your kidneys or you're going to piss blood if you go yep. that way. And yeah, yep. it's pretty brutal. Yeah, it's pretty insane. Um, but that's what I'm saying is you guys share a lot of the same, uh, I don't even want to say resources because it's not like business resources, but it's off-road community, right? It's small, and you guys have worked together to be able to push the industry yep. forward. Like, I love seeing the stuff that you guys are talking about, <clears> the stuff that Justin talks to me about all the time. It's just so cool to see the off-road community pushing forward in anything that they do. Yeah, no, you're right of, of – it's, I think it's one of them, you know, he has a whole different market than we have, but really it comes down the same, you know, we're trying to do the same thing as he's doing. He's trying to do the same thing we're doing in a yep. bit, you know, in different, different markets, I guess you would call it, you know? Yeah. What is it? So. That's actually a good question, Justin, is what is the stuff that they do when you p keep your finger on the pulse that you can utilize stuff like that in uh, the business that you have in the racing, oh, excuse me, stuff that you guys do? Well, uh, <clears throat> I think from a, from a, a design and an engineering standpoint, uh, trophy trucks are at the pinnacle of, of that. You know, when it comes to off-road racing, you know, nothing works better. Um, the geometry is perfect. Um, the components are strong enough to put up with the abuse. And, you know, that mentality, um, uh, that thought process, if it can be used with what we do in UTVs, then everything about the UTV industry is going to be better, especially in the racing side of things. Now, the racing end of UTVs may not be the biggest part of the market. Um, of course, it's not. And most <laughs> racing, typically, everybody is on a basis. But if a little bit of what we learn while racing with that mentality of make it the best you can, engineered the best, uh, as light as possible, but still strong, never break, finish races, can, can trickle down into what everybody else is driving, then their weekends are awesome. They yeah. don't have short weekends. Yeah, not for sure. pissed off. Yeah. Rip an arm off of it when they just hit a bush in the dunes or, you know, playing around Ocotillo Wells or in, in Texas or, or even Louisiana in the mud. If they've got a full weekend, it's because of the trophy truck mentality that has trickled down into UTVs. Yeah, I agree 100%. And Justin actually has a, a, a good program because he, he does this a lot in his business. Is he puts all of the stuff into his racing program that he's trying to develop for his customers, right? Very similar to what you guys do. So uh, you go out and test at the races. You go out and figure out if it's, uh, it's going to be a failure. It's going to be on you. It's going right. to be part of the uh, sure. bad for the race program, but it's going to end up being really good for the end consumer. 
And that's a lot of the stuff that both of you guys do. Yep. No, it's uh, and I believe the same thing you said, Justin. It's it's a, uh, you know, you look at a trophy truck, you look at a UTV, completely different animals, you know. But you're building something or 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 selling parts for to make a, a manufacturer stuff better. Which everything you build, I've seen all of it. Every piece is nice. Every piece is better. Every piece is more reliable. Every piece is you know, cost more money and that's that's what you're that's what you're into this is building better stuff for you know, so that people have a good time, you know? So uh same with same with trophy truck, you know? It's uh these are these are toys, you build toys. It's all, you know, just uh um you know, take some of the stuff that the bigger stuff, make it smaller. You know? Um that's a, that's exactly it. And and I think that if if every manufacturer, at least in our UTV industry, could adopt the trophy truck mentality, um, then then all the parts that were made would be amazing. I mean, honestly, because it, nothing if it's not, then it's not going to live and it's not going to be on a truck. Sure. Right. Sure. Yeah. So, and uh, that's it. I think everybody at, at, in this conversation right now, too, has had uh, their failures, right? What You, you know exactly what you don't want to do next time. Yeah. But that's the whole thing that makes the progression so interesting, right? Because if you didn't know what was messed up, then you wouldn't know how to go past it and make it better. Yep, yep. I think that's so cool that you guys all do that. Um, Justin, do you remember any stories uh, seeing these guys at the track or uh, anything over the past, uh, you know, two decades uh, that you can talk about <laughs> that's PG-13? Well, I mean, I mean, first, let me say that there's not a better group of guys in the industry than these guys sitting next to you. Um, they've done nothing but help me every step of the way, anytime that I ever needed it or ever had some re- ridiculous question. And you know what? Another thing, too, you know, Rick could be busy trying to bang a truck out that was leaving that night to go to a race, and he would stop and talk to me every single time. So um, I never forgot that. You know, it was years ago, Rick. It was I think we met in 98, 99 and, and, um, it, it's never changed. Also, uh, these guys never talk any smack. <laughs> I've never heard a bad word out of their mouth about anyone, even if somebody dicked them on something. So that's, it's solid that it's also a, a reason why, you know, they've been in the industry forever and build the best truck made. Yeah. I can. Uh, Thank you. I could definitely agree with that. Have, having said that, um, I have to, so, Jeff has mad fab skills. I don't know if you guys have already talked about this, but basically he's built every single truck through that shop, right? But I don't know if everybody knows this or not, but um, Rick's got some fab skills too. Oh, really? Should we have a competition here, a fab competition? Yeah, I had to work one time. (laughs) Hey, it's been a while, but I did work one time. And you ask all my guys, I'm better off in the office because I don't know how to do nothing. You know, I could stay, Keep Justin. Upstairs. Justin, I could still hang with the best of them. I promise you that. I bet you can. I bet you, you know? can. I, I had, I had, a, I had a customer that was driving me nuts. Um, he had to have something that I committed to that I couldn't get done. And I, I walked in the door and I'm like, Rick, do you guys have time for this? And I'm, I'm looking around. As I asked that, there's like seven trucks that are apart that they got to bang out. And Rick said, Oh hell yeah, I'll do it. <clears throat> it was just shock mounts in the front of an you know F-150. And uh, I turned around, left, and I came back like a day later, and, and Rick's the one that was banging the whole thing out, and they were badass. Nice. But the last thing he should have been doing is that, but he did it yep. for us. It was awesome. That's super cool. <laughs> it all goes back to that camaraderie thing, getting everything done. Uh, it's pretty cool to see that. And, uh, adversely, uh, talking about Justin and the, the stuff that he's done now, um, you obviously knew him when he was building the sand cars and stuff like that. To see where he's at now and the progression of his business and the UTV industry and how much he's actually helping all of his customers have uh, better sure. times. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you know the story of why he started shock therapy? He told I- it. He had told us uh, on uh, on a, the show that we had with him uh, a year and a half ago. And I don't it was, I don't know the whole reason, but yeah. of course, there's when he got into it was like I say perfect. You know, I think Justin, you even said um, something about me helping you build something at one time when you were trying to get it started or something. I don't remember all of it, but um, I'm like, man, I, I'm too busy. Dude. I don't got I don't have time to do that. But it's it's awesome to see where he's taking him, man. No, and no, his his business has gone, and he even, I mean, 
you know, same thing. He, hey, I bought a new building. You got to come check uh, it out. Oh, yeah. And he's got a, uh, I got, you know, this machine now, and I got that, and I'm building yeah. these. And it's So like, now if you guys need help, you guys can rely no, on him, too. It's a, it's a, and, and I think, Justin, last time we talked, maybe, well, I mean, we talk every once in a while, but a year ago you said, hey, I just bought another machine. You know, if you ever need something or you ever need to use my machines, come over here. You know, CNC machines are like a trophy truck. You don't just let anybody use them. Yeah. But he was like, hey, if you ever, you know, we have six CNC machines right now. Yep. And, um, you know, I don't know how many you have now, Justin, but whatever it is, it's it's good in keeping your business going. But it's, it's uh, you know, for somebody to say if you ever need a machine – you know, yeah. come over and you can use it. Absolutely. That's you like know? telling so. somebody, hey, if you want to drive my Ferrari, come on over and drive it. Pretty much. That's, yeah. it's, you know, for some of these machines that we have, cost way more than Ferraris. Yeah, absolutely. You know? it, it's neat to see, though. And he's doing it because of the good stuff that you guys did in the past. I think it's all. He's got a he's got a business mind that keeps moving him forward and getting bigger, and he's, he's uh, excited about building badass parts hey so let's talk about some of those badass parts so the the stuff that justin is doing for utvs now and the shocks and the suspension and everything is fantastic and a lot of it comes from the direction that you guys lead with trophy trucks and the suspension and stuff so maybe you guys can go back and forth a little bit about the correlations there well i'll lead on that one because a lot of the the bigger shock stuff that's coming out of the fox race division right now maybe um pushed and and uh, spurred by John Markin coming back out of the military division and kind of running the race division. <laughs> uh, electronic controlled, you know, four inch bypasses and coilovers and things that direction. Hopefully that's trickling or getting to where you guys are able to use it. I know that John's been working on it for quite a while. Well, that, that ECU and technology comes from the development from Fox and Polaris through du- their dynamic system. And then the further development you know, with Can-Am. So our industries are so intertwined, more so than most people think or, or would know or believe. Yeah. And um, I, I think that the more that everybody communicates, uh, the better everything's going to uh, be. And it's hard. To, it's really, really tough to say that, that some of the shock technology out of UTVs is going to improve a trophy truck. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. But electronically... It is a possibility, and I, and I think that what they've learned in, in trophy trucks is trickling down and getting into UTVs as well. Yeah, I think that so they well, have sharing they, all those resources, right? Yeah. yeah. And they have one of our trophy trucks with all <laughs> electronic shocks on it that they've yeah. been testing. Oh, really? So it's for real, and like you said, of yeah, it's a you know I'm sure that part of it had to do with the Raptor, part of it had to do with the. A, a lot of the UTV stuff for control wise and all that. And we do talk to John all the time and the guys at Fox and, uh, incredible of, you know, something that they can do that and make it all happen. And it's, it is happening, right? I mean, it's literally, they're on the truck and they have tested and, um, three or four of the guys that have our, all of our trucks, um, have been driving it. And we have been, uh, uh, we've been invited out to drive it at some point. Um, so, but yes, it, uh, yeah, it's all, a, I think, a balance, you know, in their business to mine and your business, you know. Uh, for sure. And it, like I said, it's, it's all interconnected, whether we can talk about some of the details on it or not. But, you know, the sky's the limit on the stuff that's being developed right now and, and when it comes to shock. Yeah, and pretty soon you're going to have touchscreen iPads that are controlling everything, and you're going to have terrain following. That stuff is, you know, maybe not in the next few years. It's around but it the is corner, certainly in less than a decade, and um, that is a combination of trophy truck and UTV um, development together. Even though the those industries don't normally talk. Yeah, for sure. It's pretty cool to see, though. you got to really appreciate that because um, well, I asked these guys at the beginning of the show, Justin, if they ever thought that trophy trucks would be as far advanced as what they are now, and the answer was no. Um, but uh, you really have to understand like how awesome it is that the past, I don't know, five to eight years, the UTVs have actually helped a little bit. Sure. No, they have, and, and really we have, we have them. Yeah, and for somebody to buy 
something off the shelf, I call it. To You're do, talking about going down to the dealership and buying a UTV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's flipping incredible. Yeah. Of you got a baby a you got a baby of, trophy a lot of truck. People that go out buying them to go pre round with and they don't do anything to them, just yeah. buy it and go pre round. Throw a little cage on it and you're ready to rip. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, it's completely out of control and and the race the race side of it is as being like a in the trophy truck side of it is now on the UTV racing, they've there's not much left of the UTV anymore. Like <laughs> these are nothing left of a regular pickup truck anymore. Yeah, exactly. You know, I uh, mean, hubs, er, everything, motors, trannies, the spindles, the everything Justin makes, sway bars, steering, hubs. Yeah, I still got. I still got to yeah. say for Justin's sake, and and I'm not just fluffing Justin right here, but oh, that's come steer, on, really, that's, dude. That steering rack Racks, that he yeah, has, oh, my, that thing is like a, a yep. freaking <laughs> Tiffany bracelet for us off road guys, yeah. man. Yeah. All this stuff is all this stuff oh my is, God. is good candy, dude. I it love really those It really means in Justin's world the stuff. There's people that build stuff in the UTV market that you like go. Mm, yeah, I don't think that'll hold up. Yeah, we can live without that. 90% or 99% of the stuff Justin build is real life race parts that are beautiful, that yep. are nice and, and production wise. And, um, you know, him selling it is, is uh, you know, if now if, if there was as many trophy trucks as UTVs, man, I'd be sitting on the beach somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. How, how could you ever build hundreds of trophy trucks a year? Let me ask you that. Oh no, you know, it's because not. Of what you wish for? It's not today. You can't build two a year, but <clears throat> it's because uh, of level of detail. Trying no, to get parts. Trying to get parts. Oh, oh, but yeah, I see what you're saying because of the current world that we're living in. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's insane. It's you know, engines. You could buy motors in, you know six eight weeks and now it's like yeah well maybe 26 weeks i think i ordered a motor and the engine builder told me 26 weeks that's half a year that's six months we could build a whole truck and if everything goes good and we had metal like you know you said you borrowed some one time and you know metal and heim joint just every you know there's a hiccup in every little market that that holds you up you know so it's uh um, you know, getting parts today might be harder. You know, we used to get, I'm looking at this truck, we used to get fiberglass. I'd call up and a week later I'd have it. Now it's like uh, four to six weeks. Yeah, that's just the way it goes these days. Mm -hmm. um, Justin ran into some of those problems too, but he's fixing them by doing it himself now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. we have, you know, just like Justin, we have bought uh, not every machine to build anything, but we could, we could build anything here. Yeah. I mean, we can cut it, bend it, machine it, weld it, but now it's coming to of you know Jeff a week or so goes like, hey, give me some of this tubing. And you call, oh uh, well, maybe February. God, that's insane. You know, man. they quit making tubing, I guess now. So, but we can't. <laughs> I'm not going in the tubing business. So, Justin, you can't buy it from me. Hey, Justin. So, um, it is it it is pretty cool that you guys do share a lot of that stuff, man. I can only imagine the things that you guys have uh, you know crossed paths with in the past twenty years. It's really cool to hear those stories, dude. I appreciate you coming on and hanging out with us. Anytime, man. I'm I'm glad I could you know impart some something to this conversation. But it's it's very hard when you're talking to the guys that build the best stuff in the industry and in the pinnacle class of racing. Um, everybody should listen to everything they say. I did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, hey, we appreciate it, and good to see you again. And uh, sure. Rick, Jeff, keep, it, keep, it keep, up. keep it all going, buddy. Keep keep the ball right, rolling. Yes. You know, it's Everyone. good when we see when you see your name everywhere out there. So you know, yeah. you're doing you know something. What? Right. It's, yeah. There's a lot of that. You know. Really appreciate so, okay. everything, Justin. Thank you, guys. Come hey. over to the shop so we can go have lunch. Yeah, buddy. Have a great night. All right. See ya. So those conversations are few and far between, right? Because you guys are all so busy. Justin's so busy. But you have to respect and appreciate um, the last two decades, right? Like you guys uh, yeah. understanding uh, the mutual respect that you guys all have for off-road and uh, the things that you guys are doing. You guys are obviously on different paths. But it's pretty awesome to be able to see the success that off-road has given all you guys. For sure on that. It's been incredible, and it's 
Really no end in sight. Yeah, it, well, and even, like, Lindsay just passed by. She just walked by. But even to see it trickle down, like, uh, yeah. and, you know, she's, you know, in the off-road industry as well. Yeah. Um, all right, so we already talked about how long the business has been around. We answered some of the Instagram questions. Um, I had a question that, well, it's not more like a, a comment, but you've really worked with a lot of amazing people over the years. Uh, fantastic drivers sure. like we talked about, you know. <clears throat> um, but maybe each one of you could give me a little bit of a perspective on some of the – milestones that really help shape your individual perspective on where you're at now? Um, well, I, I think having the top-notch drivers that we had and getting the input back from them and being able to take that into putting that to work. And, yeah. And building off of that and not saying, yeah, okay, you know, whatever. Yeah, exactly. A lot uh, of guys would say the driver should just drive better. Right? Yeah, shut up and drive. But we, right. we, we started <laughs> out like <clears throat> nothing was drawn on CAD. I just kind of. Jeff's I, blueprints are a stinking yellow pad of paper. With a and blue, a, a, a blue, spiral notebook. A That's how good ideas and, start, though, man. Yeah, but just drew it up, and we, we kind of hit it on the mark pretty close right out the get-go and and we've just built off of that and to, to have a platform that you can that you have something good and you can just make better uh then it's been a kind of easy road and then we had you know top drivers from all the mcmillans to bryce to rob mack to jesse jones and dolly of dolly everybody just, yeah tons and tons of guys lalo laguna i mean, I mean we the, had there's we, hundreds, actually. Yeah. We really have had a lot and of good drivers, you know? So is that kind of where <laughs> you're leaning at for your milestones then? It's just the the understanding and being able to uh, adapt to what these people are telling you right. to move take, forward? Take it all in and try and make it better. You know, that's a successful business practice for whatever it is. If you're making widgets, it doesn't matter, yeah, right? Because sure. if you are closed-minded and you think you're doing it right, you're going right. to be destined right. for failure, right? Yeah, you're stuck. Yeah, absolutely. So I love that that's your answer. How about you, Rick? Do you have any milestones that you think, uh, maybe even one or two, 20, that changed your path or y your direction of where you see it now? Well, I think, uh, I don't know, really, uh, I think it really hit it hit me of trying to do stuff a little bit more maybe productive, production-wise, is, you know, I, at one point I had 10 trucks on order. Oof. And these people are, like, literally killing me to... You know, yeah, calling you every five minutes, but get yeah, it done. First, get, yeah, yeah, like, me first. Yeah, yeah. There's guys that were like, "Hey, I don't, I don't care, but I'll pay more money, right, to have the next truck." And I, I really can't do that. I don't. Yeah. I don't care that you're. Well, yeah, if they have money or not. Who it was, you know, but yeah. but it come down to that every truck we're building it was, you know, a, a masterpiece and and uh, you know, really, who would have ever? Th I mean, the milestone is it clicks every time of the car, the car number. Yeah, you yeah, know? and well, it's like, man, we hit, man. we hit we hit twenty five. I'm like, <sighs> you know, here I thought we grew up in racing, yep. motorcycles, and we did we raced big wheels, you know, little plastic big wheels. You were the innovators <laughs> of the Nitro Circus. Uh, <laughs> no, but we, we know all we know all them guys. <laughs> but but uh, you know, we raced motorcycles not very long, and we were younger, yep. dumb kids, and then we got into like the Honda Odysseys. Yep. And um, some will say the first side by side. Yeah, we beat the crap out. Well, Straight then we axle, got into no the yep. then we got into FL. Then Jeff went to work for Walker. I started racing um, some Mickey Thompson stuff. Yep. In the little super lights and in the sixteen hundred buggies, and then um, you know we started working on uh, people's cars and helping. And you know I think the it's funny the guy Steve Godfrey that was here today. Was really the first race I ever raced with mm -hmm. off road. Was a Mint 400. Yeah. He had built this car, and we go to this race, a local race, and he said, uh, Hey, I'm not feeling good. Why don't you and uh, Chris, his kid was like 10 or 12, and we went and signed up, and we won this little local race that had, you know, 50 cars, like a Snore race today yep. or a Moore race or something. It was ADRA or it was, uh, what was it back then? It was ADRA. ADRA. Yeah. 
And I won overall. Nice. There you go. And so then it was like, hey, you want to drive for me? Hey, you want to help me with my car? Hey, do you? So that's how we started, really, is yeah. Is I had a, my, me and my wife were talking about it. I bought a new. Um, Sometimes those are just off chance experiences, though, right? Yeah, I bought a new box truck for the, you know, a support truck mm-hmm. to take to the races to help, you know, all, all of our teams. And um, back then I had a box van. It was a. 79 Ford, and I literally would go to every race, and people knew me as just the guy that helped. Nice. You know, and um, so anyway, we did that. Then it's just, it's really just evolved of of all the race stuff, but where we grew up and where we, uh, um, you know, our dad died when I was eight, Jeff was seven, Um, so, you know, we didn't grow up with money, we didn't grow up with, you know big backing behind us we whatever we wanted we had to do ourselves you know yeah and i can see that 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 has had a long lasting uh impression on a lot of people because you guys are both so humble and you understand the the work that goes into your passion yep yep it's all about i i say we put every bit of everything back in the business it's pretty cool to see man um joe whining and i actually had a conversation about this it was probably four or five years ago but uh, we were sitting in there, and uh, I think he had just started taking over Jesse's Jones's uh, okay. program, yep. and so one of his trucks was down there, and he needed help working on other people's stuff. So he hired a guy, and uh, he goes, "George, I don't understand why these guys look at their watch at four fifty nine. The job's not done. Right. Uh, it's never done. <laughs> but the, but the point was is is his reality wasn't the same as everybody else's, and it's very true." Yeah. That your guys' reality is you work until the job is done. You get things done, right? And that's what makes a good product in the end. Sure, that's what sure. makes these trophy trucks sitting behind us. It's really awesome to see Some, that. Somebody said uh, the difference between, I don't remember if it was you, you know, me or one of my employees or something or whatever is, whose name's on the front of the check? Yeah, you know exactly. So it's, you, you have, we have really good employees. Um you know, that, that really know how to how to win and what to do. And, um, you know, the guys that, that prep stuff, the guys that build stuff, we have, you know, some of the best welders and some of the best mechanics. And we have Jeff, but we have, you know. <laughs> we have everything. We have, yep. we have really the best fabricator, I believe, in, in anywhere. Um, he only wants to kill me about once a week. Yeah, but um, six point nine times a day. Yep. Uh, so we had a couple questions come in. One that I thought was pretty interesting from Kevin McCullough. He said, uh, "It's not an off-road question, but I admire I admire Jeff and Rick as uh, great people with uh, always great advice. Being father of all girls, Rick and Jeff with uh, Lindsay and Corey. What is some advice you would have uh, for me as a new dad to my daughter? Kevin's a great guy." Knowing him and his and his parents for since he was a, a kid, long time, yeah, peeing put, on himself. Put the mic a little closer to your mouth. <clears throat> yeah, but he's uh, really support. And if she wants to go race and start saving your money now, <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> but, uh, no, all my kids, my son race. I named him Race, but he, I didn't let him race long enough, and he holds it against me now. Oh, really? <laughs> But uh, what does he expect you to name him soccer or something? I uh, him by myself. <laughs> but uh, you know to support them in whatever they want to do, and and uh, to to they've been around it their whole life. Yeah, they've been interested in it, and they go to all the races still, and uh, it's become their life now. And uh, so they're they're involved in anything to go with it. And Rick's daughters race trophy carts. With all my kids, when they when the trophy carts first started, it was a crazy life. There was I'm still a little jealous as a kid. I didn't get to race trophy carts. It looked a, so fun. Still there can. There was a hundred of <laughs> right them. Right behind you is a big, <laughs> a big trophy senior cart. Senior trophy cart. <laughs> you had to pre-enter. There was a hundred carts, and you had to no pre- freaking way pre-enter, or you miss the cutoff. Really? What year was this? Um, probably. 2005, probably. That's the golden era for trophy so cars. So 99 and 2000. She so it had to be. 10. It had to be. Uh, Holy smokes! Yeah, five, six, seven ish, somewhere around there. Yeah, they were crazy. That's insane. And then we have like the mod kids now and all yeah, that stuff. And they're yeah. going, yeah, like it's now cool. They're all moving up to trophy trucks. It, yeah, exactly. 
It's insane to see, man. Um, well, and we already had the comment come in from Tim Martin said humble is a extreme understatement for these two. Um, that goes a long way in business and racing and anything that you do, as long as you understand what your value is internally, but you're a humble person outside, right? You know what I mean? So it really uh, has a long lasting effect. So I appreciate that you guys have that, uh, those qualities. Um, what has been some of the favorite projects that you guys have worked on over the years? And I'm not just talking about fabricating or building. Like one of the newest projects that you got to work on was with, we're going to call it the media machine of the Hoonigans. And those are completely different projects <laughs> right. because it's not necessarily building a, new, a whole new truck, right? It's a whole new venture that you guys have to uh, partake in. So if there's not that, like what are some of the other cool projects that you guys have had to work on over the years? I think the big sp- the big splash that was a lot of work was the building the Bronco. Oh yeah, doing the the project for Ford, and then led into after doing the Baja project, then led into doing the King of Hammers trucks, and so we we did three of those for them, and and it's uh, I remember seeing stuff about that. That that, that was it big, was a super cool project. project. Uh, aside from the Bronco project and the Hoonigan, what do you think, Rick? Uh. I don't know. I think I'm overwhelmed every day of all the projects. Yeah. But it's really like, uh, I don't know that there's been any, uh, you know, special ones that stood out. It's just. Uh, yeah, because um, it's always a stepping stone, right? It's They're all moving forward. It's like, oh, man, you got Ford Motorsports and Ford Performance behind you now, and you got this. And, you know, that was a great program. And, and uh, you know, we learned a lot. They learned a lot. They did what they wanted to do. We, you know, we got the stuff. And uh, uh, but really, I think the f- any new the new G six doing, the, doing the, the four wheel drive. The four wheel drive was one. The new G six was like, you know, we pretty much sat down and he wrote down forty seven things that that he knew needed to be better. And then we got with, you know, say Rob Mack. And we got with this guy and that driver and this driver. And then we got with the fabricators of how to build it, you know, easier. And then we got with uh, Corey that drew the whole thing. Yeah. And we got with, uh, um, you know, now we got every machine that we need. And we built a lot of billet parts. And we built some titanium parts. And we built. So now you have all the tools to execute. Yeah, it was more of the, the G6, I think, was the. You know, we took 20 years of of uh, um, 68. We probably did the first 20 trucks. Manual. All hand yeah, hand, hand, hand bent, just hand cut. Off my blueprint. Mickey Good Mouse, God, that Mickey must have Mouse been, fixtures. That must have been so much work. And then to gear up for, like, Jeff had built all the A-arms, uh, or perfect thing, the rack plate that holds the A-arms and the rack and yep. pinion. Mm-hmm. I remember him building two or three of them in one day. Oof. Built, you know, drilled the 16 holes in it, cut it, sanded it, you know, all this. Well, now we have it laser cut. It costs about 20 bucks a piece. Yeah, and it probably <laughs> takes about 10 minutes compared no, to what I it is. I think it's right? even less than yeah. 10 probably. We cut all three in 10 minutes. Jesus, man. And you know, can- so... Do you remember those days of oh, just putting yeah, in the blood, sure. sweat, and tears? Yeah, building A-arms. Uh, let's see Starting here. every part out. We had two comments come in. Uh, I'm going to take the one from uh, Chad Soren. He said, uh, did Jeff like building the three-seater? For, For Pete. brother. Yeah. Yeah. I told well, him he was Pete, nuts, Hey, but. Pete was a whole different animal. Yeah. Anybody that knows Pete knows. <laughs> if he hey, wa- I raced that truck. If he wants something, he. What was the purpose of it, first of all? He wanted to be able to stay in it and drive. He's got somebody to navigate, somebody he, he to got, watch the gauges, and he's got two guys to change his tires. And he's got and he's got two people to pay the bill. Huh? So I mean, I guess getting, he was giving people rides. I guess there's some logical thinking behind it, right? So I raced that truck with Pete for the first year. Yeah. And uh, you know, we we built it and we took it to Laughlin, and it really wasn't ready, but. We took it there anyway, and then Pete went seven and a half miles and wadded the thing up. Oh, great. So, right off the get-go. So, then I, I, uh, um, we f- stay up all night, and we fix it, and Mickey Mouse it together, and then I went out the next day, and if you guys remember the video of, of uh, that truck and Chet Huffman at, at 
I'm up on the back of Chet Huffman at 120 miles an hour. Really? Um, and so the three seat program, it was pretty cool. If you think about the like the single seater of Ivan Stewart, yeah, you know, you're in the middle of the car. You pivot. You you move less. You move forward less, side to side left, and and um, you know, so it's it's easier on your body. You know, so you could drive longer. It's crazy to think, though, like oh. that. And I can only imagine the calls that you get or that come into the shop, and they're like a crazy request, like a three seater, right? Yep. Yep. And then you go to Jeff, and you're like, "Hey, could we do this?" And he's like, "Dude, no, no." He <laughs> would. He's. <laughs> oh, I put two engines in it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. can only imagine that conversation. Yeah. It wasn't much, but <laughs> it wasn't much, but it was a. Uh, you know, it really it. In Jeff's eyes on that was, it's going to be a bad project. We don't need to be doing that. We build trucks every day that win races. We don't need that. Tell him, give him his money back. Yeah. You know? Um, it really worked, you know, me being the, I say, business side of it. It was good. It was it was a good project. We've done really good with it. Jeff tested it for Six seven months. Yeah, like I like you he said, he raced the it. Yeah. He raced it for the first year of every race. Yep. Him and Clyde, and um, it's really like a uh, if you could ever imagine, it's it's literally out of control. I can only imagine. Like <laughs> I, I don't know what I would do. I mean, yeah. I think about like people <clears throat> driving a Corvette with traction control and they get nasty. Yeah. I could only imagine what something yeah. like that does. Yeah, it's it's a. Uh, it's it's not like the easiest thing to drive. Well, then give us the difference in, since we're talking about the ease of driving. Uh, what's the difference, or maybe Jeff can do it better. I don't know, but um, between the all-wheel drive truck and the two-wheel drive truck, we asked Rob Mack kind of the same question. Yeah. The the all-wheel drive, like just like Matney's, is it's like. Kind of stupid, easy to drive. Yeah, that's what the, a lot of the guys that I've said. Uh, I mean, they use like a it's a weird term, but it's like a cheater truck, right? Yeah. Like <clears throat> you're you're seventy seventy five percent in the four wheel drive is is a hundred percent in the right. two wheel drive, and you're kind of kind of the all wheel drive point and shoot. I mean, you you throw it in and stab the gas, and there you go. Where the two wheel drive, you're Chasing it yep. around, trying to control it. That's exactly what Rob said on Tuesday. He said that the two-wheel drive is you have to predict a lot more what you and the vehicle are going to do yeah. together. Yeah. There you can be more reactive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the twin, it's it's <laughs> it's they're both – you're kind of in two two-wheel drives. So under D-cell, all four wheels are D-celling. So, so, you know, coming into a slide or something, you're in – you're in a four wheel drift rather than trying to set the truck. The whole truck's sliding, so you got a lot more throttle control, and it weighs about I don't know 500 pounds more than our. It's cushy. Yeah. It's really Other cushy because it's heavy. Yeah. It, it goes so <coughs> it's got a lot I mean, more. Ima- imagine that car has two 525 horse motors in it. Yeah. We did it on a chassis dyno. It makes almost 200 more. Than Matney's truck with a thousand horsepower big block in it. Good God! But it's it's not. Um, this car goes good from say zero to eighty or ninety, and then it's like a small motor truck after that. A lot different vibration and stuff. Like yeah, a like a like Matney's four wheel drive it's with the big block. It goes. You go. You go eighty. And you want to go 120, you push the gas more. You want to go 150, you push the gas more. Was there any harmonic differences? This car has bad, um, like if you've ever been in a twin engine airplane, yeah. mm-hmm. the, the I don't know what it's called. Yeah, if they get both motors running. Cycling? Yeah. Yeah, it's like. And they get off rhythm or something. They're both coming out the same pipe, but they're both teed in together, so it, it uh it makes a lot of noise, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool to see, though, and that progression is what I'm most interested yeah. in. I really yeah. like it. Um, we had a couple comments come in. One that I thought was interesting, uh, John Lewis says, I remember that uh, three-seater crash. The wreck over the road crossing was on one of the Desert People videos. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what crash is he talking that, about? That was Pete's. That was this seven and a half miles. Yep. Oh. It was right. on the yeah, power was line. A, uh, a washout, cross wash, and he... And there it went. Oh, it just stuck the back end and it flipped it landed on its wheels. 
And he's like, you guys all right? But it blowing the steering ram apart. Oh. And so they, they, they were, were toast. Done. Oh, so man. We That's, fixed it. <laughs> how many times have you said that? Yeah. <laughs> we fixed it. Um, so, okay, so we kind of talked about that. Um, some of the cool things that I was looking at when I was looking at stuff um, – You've got to deal with some cool projects, like we talked about with the Hoonigans most recently. But um, one of the coolest milestones that I saw was that uh, when Matney had the rigid truck, mm-hmm. um, it turned into an RC car for the yeah. kids. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was pretty cool because yeah. um, that was like right at the time when I was getting into short course, and I saw one of those RC yeah. cars. Yeah. I was like, that is so cool. Like, what is that? And then I went to the races, and I started looking at the races. Um, so that had to probably be something pretty cool for you guys to see too. For sure, it was, and, how, yeah. and how the RC car world is blown up, and and now they're kind of they're mimicking the yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Have, so yeah, like the tracks and stuff. We know Jenkins. Yeah, and uh, they've had some of our trucks, and uh, but they, you know, when they were producing that, we had talked to them, and it's funny, not really. They didn't build off of our truck but there if you look at the new udr from traxxas it's like there's a lot of little yeah geyser stuff on it i mean even you know? the, even like the trailing arms and yeah. the, the yeah. suspension system trailing and arms, sway bars and the tire you know the way the tires are mounted and the, the look of it a little bit and uh you know so it's it's um it's good that it you know like you said yes the rigid you know we know the guys at rigid right pretty good and um um, you know, they, uh, you know, they talked to Justin and, you know, we did a TV show back East with them yeah. with the whatever truck and nation. And, um, I remember seeing a couple of those. Yeah, it was good. It was, it's all, it was all good and produced something good out of it. That'll be around, you know, same with the Broncos. We build the Bronco and I think Lindsay sent us pictures or something of, of, you know, now they've made a model out of it. They made yeah, a Legos. puzzle and then they made a Legos and, now I just saw was it somebody said a keychain or something maybe I don't yeah, remember keychain and hot wheels <coughs> hot wheels hot wheel. so hot these wheels. these are some of the milestones that I was talking about so I'm glad this conversation popped up because that has to feel pretty cool that you guys yeah. had a well we'll call it a, a hand in it or a small yeah. hand in it right like from the beginning that's that's yep. something pretty neat yeah no it's pretty and you know getting I I say having the um, you know, Ford Motorsport or Ford Performance, you know, contract or whatever, that's a pretty big whatever milestone, I think, yeah. to, to have underneath your belt, too, you know? Oh, okay, um, we got a couple more serious questions, <coughs> but one question that I wanted to understand is, why on the Baja results do they name Ford or CTM, or, like, why are some of the ones that are your trucks not labeled your trucks? Uh, it's, it's all it's when weird. they sign up. And how it's they what they put on their how the paperwork. driver does it? Yeah. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. So if I, you if you see on their Ford, it could be hey, you know, they're f- one of your trucks or a competitor yeah, truck. Or, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, it could be anybody's truck, but but you know they put custom. They, you know, um, that's just weird to me. That's all I yeah, was wondering. Yeah. It's just it's just a weird thing. Um, okay, so the Baja One Thousand went good. You guys had a good time. I mean, it's your millionth Baja One Thousand, so um, that was cool. But the Mint Four Hundred is coming up. It's in a little bit of a weird spot in the year. Does that mean you guys prep different? Like, what's the the thought process going into it? Because it's going to come up in a couple of days here. A different truck, so you can't really go to the Baja One Thousand, come back and clean it up, and go to the Mint Four Hundred. So. Right. So the guys that are going there either have a second truck or or didn't race the Baja 1000. Okay. And then we take them, but we'll be uh will they be there with Robert Johnston, one of our trophies, and then Jesse James is racing one of ours. Oh, that's going to be pretty cool. And then um Is that one of the trucks that you're preparing here in the shop? Uh he has it in Texas. Oh, okay. So they do it. And then um Nunley that that has been racing for a long time, they'll be racing also. So Right on. We'll be managing three trucks and babysitting and pitting support and all that stuff. So it's going to be pretty cool, man. On tra- yeah, we'll have. I think we have nine or ten trucks in it. Man, that's a so. Re- Travis Williams is one of them. Um, I don't. I don't know all the all of them, but anyway, it's uh, Rob Mack, of course. Yeah. Of course. Uh, um, like I said, we talked to Rob on Tuesday, so we're looking forward to seeing him up there in his hometown. It's good. For sure. Good, good, good. It will be cool. Um, and then so one last thing that I wanted to talk about that I know a few people asked about is um, the difference in the pre-runners nowadays compared to what they used to be. So, uh, and specifically the, um, we'll call them half-ton pre-runners, not the UTV pre-runners. Yeah. Um, how do you guys like building those? They're a lot of work. 
<laughs> they're a lot of work, but they uh they're impressive. They're stinking beautiful. They're, I feel like their reliability is so good. It's they're all the same same stuff off our trophy truck. So all the all the suspension off a trophy truck will go on those same shocks. Really the same motor, just lower compression, same transmission, same rear end, brakes. So if you ended up needing something for your truck that you didn't yeah, have on the bottom, oh, yeah. you got it. Hot that's, pursuit. Yep. Yeah, that actually sounds pretty cool. Yep. Um, well, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys at the at the Mint this coming week. Um, and you guys kind of already brushed on this. We're going to go into our rapid-fire Q&A section. But the last question of the night is what's in the, in the future, uh, near future, for Geyser Brothers? Actually, you know what? Let me rephrase that. What's in the near future, meaning six months to a year for Geyser Brothers? And then maybe what's in five years, ten years down the line? Um, I go day by day. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I can you know, promise that you have a big schedule. More, more trucks and more, uh, um, you know, definitely need to get um, uh, the all-wheel drive finished. The electric truck is, you know, hopefully a year. Hopefully the, the, the all-wheel drive and the electric all-wheel drive, um, you know, within the next year. Um, and uh, really just bigger and bigger and better. We have you know? three trucks going right now. We got three pre-runners going right now. We got three more pre-runners to go and more trucks to go. And uh, the schedule's full, it sounds like. Yeah, we got, yeah, it's a lot of, there's a lot going on. And, uh, you know, the world is a little bit crazy right now. So getting stuff and employees and. You oh, know. you mean the hundreds and hundreds of, of shipping containers? <laughs> yeah, I don't know that that has much to do with us. I can tell you I what, man. I can promise we have, it. Yeah, we got a truck going to Australia, and, and oh, cool. I talk, talk to the guy. We got two, one that's real close and one that's supposed to be shipping first of the year. And um, uh, they are, uh, it's like we don't even think about putting on a boat. Yeah. It's like we're going to just pay the money and ship air them freight. on the air freight. Them. Yeah. And, um, that's way better. Well, it's better, it's quicker, it just costs a lot more money. Yeah, exactly. You know? um, we actually had Tom Young comment in. Uh, actually, this is a really good question or comment. He says, uh, okay, hope this makes sense. Many people, or many fab guys have looked up to the Geyser Brothers as idols. Um, who was your guys' idol when you guys were starting out? Um, I don't know if it's an idol. I think it's just the build of it, but I think that, the PPI Toyota was like a, you know, or really, if you look in the background there, that, if anybody remembers Arnold of Larry Raglan's. Um, I don't, but maybe you could explain so that, that a little. So that truck, really, Jeff was involved in it the first year. That was a factory Chevrolet deal for Larry Raglan, and um, uh, it won three Baja 1000s. After I came <coughs> back from Walker's, I rode with Larry the next year in in that we won the ball 1000 point to point but that truck was a uh you know I think just uh, it's not really one person it's like man how do I how do I build something better than that yeah that's a good you point know? but that's something to look up to that you yeah, keep yeah. striving for you right? know we all everybody knows Robbie Gordon he's a uh, he's made off road better and better and better yep um and I think we look I can't say we look up to him, but we we can beat him, and we have beat him, and you know. But it's it's a it's a level. But those are healthy competitions, right? All, because it makes good. everybody better. Yeah, it's all good. Um, <coughs> did did you have anybody that you kind of strove to strived to be like when you were younger? You know, maybe uh when you were just starting out welding. Um, I think when we were, jeez, I don't even know how old we were, but my my brother used to take us to the to the Parker 400 and the Mint 400 back yeah. in back in the old days and and to see the the Walker Evans and Ivan Stewart's and you know Mickey Thompson and legends legends yeah. and and to uh be able I went to work for Walker for 5 years and and learned a ton there and and great people and still good friends with with all of them today and uh and to see where the where the Andersons have come where yep. Randy's kids have come and, and blew the whole thing up and and to see where the sport can still go and and to see it for this twenty five years or whatever that it's still 
exploding. Yeah, and it's getting more fruitful, right? Yeah. Because of all the things. I, I love that. Like, I that there's no other better way to explain it or to end the end those questions. Um, so I think we're gonna go into the rapid fire Q and A. You guys ready for this? Let's do it. All right, you guys got to do it as quickly as possible. So we're gonna let Rick go first, and you go after him, Jeff. All right, question number one uh, to finalize the show: hard shell or soft shell, soft tacos? Um, hard, hard, hard shell. You're going hard shell too? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, chicken or asada? Chicken. Asada. Ooh, going asada. Um, so you guys must have had some good Baja taco. tacos. Got to go soft because they're always soft in Baja. Yeah, there's no other way to have it, right? No. Um, us Americans are spoiled with them deep fried tacos, Dorados, uh-huh. aren't we? Uh, dunes or the river? River. I Neither. Neither. <laughs> hey, you just picking your office? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, well, okay. What's your dream vacation then? Where are you going? Uh, I think next we're going to somewhere in Europe. Ooh, that'll be pretty cool. My bucket list is still the Netherlands, man. I really want to go there. I think that would be super cool. Uh, three wheeler or quad? Uh, uh, I think I only had three wheelers. So I never had a quad. Yeah, I still have an ATC seventy. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which three wheelers did you have? Do you guys have the uh, was it the two? Dude, one? we had them oh. all. Uh, every one when they first came out, we had the ninety with the rubber tires. We had a seventy when we were shoot seven or eight years old. Six I used years to old. tell my mom and dad that they look like moon mobiles because they yeah. look like they just 90, bounced. Yeah. 90. Then we got a one ten. Yep. And then we got a. Uh, we we had seventies that were really trick. What about the two fifty R and the two hundred X? You remember those we bad never, boys? Yeah. We never yeah, had. We didn't have them. No, those were like the pinnacle, right? Yep. Of three wheelers. Uh, we peeps. got Odysseys. Oh, yeah, that's where you guys Odysseys. went. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you went straight, yeah. straight yeah. into the safety straight zone. Four wheel. Yeah. yeah. Put a cage on it. Uh, half pe- a cage. <laughs> Something that kind of protects yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you still have to wear a neck brace inside. Uh, oh man. Pizza rolls or jalapeno poppers. Jalapeno poppers. Pizza rolls. Uh-oh. They My get, kids. They got, like, pizza rolls. And you can never get Burn away with mouth. it, man. Burn the shit out of the top of your mouth, man. <laughs> uh, coffee or tea? Neither. No? Uh, neither, but coffee probably. What's your guys' drink of choice, then? Coke. You just like Mountain Coke? Dew. Jeff's a f- crackhead. Oh, uh, co- Coca-Cola and yeah. Mountain Dew? Every day. Hey, I drink a I soda pop. I drink a soda or half a... Soda can, I start shaking, so it's... Uh-oh. So you just stay off the caffeine? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, let's see here. Favorite movie? Mm, Top Gun. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Just going for the flyby? <laughs> How about you, Jeff? Know. I've been... Just Netflix stuff, all the racing stuff that... Did you see the... Survives. Yeah, I was going to say... I did watch a little bit of that. That's no, a, I, I can stop watching it. I watched the whole thing. I want so. somebody to be able to do that. And I keep telling Lindsay, too, actually, is, like, I want somebody to be able to make off-road as cool as Supercross or Motocross or Freestyle yeah. or, like, yeah. the F1 drivers. Like, how do we do that? Right. Like, how do we make that happen? It would be so cool to figure it out one That's of these days. Neat. It is. It's super cool. And the behind-the-scenes that actually yeah. goes on, right. like, mm-hmm. uh, I remember coming back from the 1000 this year, and I'm sure you guys have more stories, but um, – I just wanted to be able to download everything that I saw in my head to yeah. the TV screen and show everybody, but it wasn't possible. Right. right. Yep. Yep. Um, okay, so if you could have one superpower, what would it be? I'm talking anything. You can be invisible. You can teleport. You can fly. You can have super speed. Super whatever speed. Whatever it is. Read minds. Somebody picked read minds one time. Super speed. You're going super speed? No, I read minds clone myself <clears throat> i definitely don't want to read minds either when he said that i was like no way <laughs> i'll clone myself so you have oh, excuse me so you have two people that would be pretty nice but how would, would we know which jeff we're gonna get <laughs> they're about the same oh <laughs> so you just show up for yeah. two family dinners yeah <laughs> that'd be perfect um uh, all right here netflix or youtube netflix netflix go on netflix um let's see here oh this one's a really good one, and I'm going to preface this one. Uh, your most memorable race, and it doesn't have to be one that you've had, but uh, like mine, for instance, um, was when I was racing AD Expert class. Um, got a really bad start at Glen Helen. Uh, ended up being last. By the end of the finish line, I didn't win the race, but I was a wheel from winning the race. Mm. I rode fantastic. It was like the most memorable race for me. Even though I had many championships and all this other stuff, that was the one. Wow. Um, so what about you guys? Memorable race. 
I mean, you guys have had so many. Maybe it wasn't even one that you guys were driving. Maybe it was something that you guys just remember. So I think was it was good. Of course, Lindsay was there. But when my two girls were racing for last place, <laughs> and all they cared about is what they looked like. Really? Yep. How awesome Literally, they Literally, that's what it was about. That's so cool. And they wore their little fire suits around the whole day, and they were thinking, you know, sunglasses and Top signing of the world. autographs. Yeah, they were just, they, they couldn't care less if they even, you know. And, of course, I'm mad <laughs> because they don't even try. They don't even, they were trying. They were having fun. That's what we were doing. But they look fantastic. They, it was great, man. They're all, like, you know, all three of their paint jobs were the same. Lindsay's oh, really? Their two were not the same, That's but cool. you could see a pink one. There was a purple one, and there was a what was the other one? Green, oh, and maybe a greenish a green teal one. color, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And they would go out there and stink and flip over and just you know and run they run into the K rails, run into the K rails, and come back to the pits waiting for autographs. They come back, <laughs> man, and then you know, then I had Super another stars. another little one, Remy. She would go, man, just terrorize the whole pits, and but man, it was a family. It was the best racing when. When it was all of all of them doing it, and that's probably a lot of the reason that you guys have so much fun being in the off road sure, world because you guys sure. still get to see that. Yeah. Um, it was great winning races. I won a lot of races. I've driven a lot. I drove for I don't know thirty years or something. Yeah, probably. And it's like, why why don't you race anymore? I go, ah, I just you know I got a lot going on and I need to make sure everybody's happy, kind of thing. You know. Yeah, and I <laughs> haven't been anywhere close to that uh, much of a legend, but like people ask me the same thing. You know, why don't you race anymore? And it, I've gotten hurt, and I've gotten into this transitionary period. And I really actually, as much as it might sound like I'm not competitive, I'm still competitive. But, like, I enjoy seeing the other people doing sure. it. Like, it yep. means a lot to me to see I have the, all these people to get to sit here and talk with you guys. Yep. Like, it's fantastic to learn all these stories and hear all this stuff. Because, yep. uh, okay, what was your most memorable race, Jeff? <clears throat> um, not because she's here, but probably the craziest was when she – when Lindsay won, won the the cup race, it was out at Firebird, and she now lived, known she as Wild Horse Pass. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And were you just on the edge of your seat the whole time? I couldn't spot. He spotted for her because I. It was, wasn't out there. I was it? It was in uh, uh, Lake Elsinore. Elsinore. Oh. Elsinore. Yeah, and he's freaking out, and and <laughs> so I'm spotting for. Her. And we ended up winning. Isn't that something that they say, yeah, though? You can't have, like, uh, somebody that's really close to you be in the spotter because they have too much uh, in uh, uh, emotional knows. investment? Yeah, yeah but when – uh, Yeah, I was freaking out. <laughs> but I, but also, like, when I finally got my first podium in my Pro 2 after struggling for years and years and – Good feeling. And then we were on a – we got a few few podiums all in a row there, and it was it was good and – Rick was my spotter. You know, I tried to hit kill it him. harder, hit it harder. And, you know, He's like, "You trying to kill me or what?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I was, you know, Ed still in the prize. fat and out of shape and waiting for that competition yellow to come out so I start <laughs> Take breathing. A break. Yeah. 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 Eat a granola bar. <laughs> Don't talk to me. I'm breathing. <laughs> um, actually, this is a good question that just came in. Uh, Joe Whining asks uh, the story on the herder truggy. Well, that was our kind of our start claim to fame, I guess. And we we had uh, I remember seeing that car. I think I only got to see it once or twice. That's the Cameron pre runner. Oh, okay. Cameron yeah, Steel has we it. We had built it, and and uh, it was a beautiful piece back back in <coughs> those days, and it was different. And we took the off road expo over in Pomona, and it wasn't done yet, but it was close. And uh, I remember what Kurt LeDuc said. Why are you wasting all these times yeah. on all these yeah. shock mounts and stuff? Welding. I, if that was one of my guys, I'd fire him if they spent all that time on the shock mounts. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but we um, <clears throat> we got it done and went to Laughlin. It was the first race. And we went out the first day, first race, and we beat the Herps Truggy. Wow. And that was... Uh, By one second. And that was crazy and they went home and changed the motor in the truggy that night really and put a fresh motor in theirs and then the second day the steering broke on it and so we but that was where like uh gus Vildosa raced class one 
and he came up to me and he goes, I want one. Put my name down. Yeah. Right there at the race. That's got to feel good <laughs> to make a, a big impact like that. Yeah, it was it was pretty awesome, and it was uh, kind of open the door and off yeah. we went. Yeah, but so did like I, I don't even know how to ask this question, but it's like an unplanned event like that. I mean, you've said it a couple times. It's just like choice decisions that have guided you guys along those things. I always tell everybody um, outside of a, an off road context, life is just a bunch of choices. And it's clear that when you guys are making these choices, there's not necessarily a light at the end of the <coughs> tunnel. You don't know if it's going to yeah. succeed, right? Yeah. And sure. you take this chance, and then you're like, oh, wow. Like, sure. And then he, all, he comes they, up and says, I want one. It's like, wow, okay, we did make the right choice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember when Gus come up and said uh, um, it was in contingency, but we had, um, you know, been pre-running with it and stuff, and – and he didn't even really – he looked at it a little bit, and he goes, put me on the list, or how much are they? And I'm yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> now you got to figure yeah, it I'll out. I'll call you later. <laughs> but uh, for John to do – for John Herder to do what we sort of asked him to do and foot the bill on that and make that deal happen was like a – I mean, a really big deal in our program. Yeah. And, you know, of course, we worked on his stuff. We helped him. We did – you know, prep and stuff on his other cars, um, some, and, uh, you know, come down to, we're building something out of the blue with, you know, some, a lot of new parts, but yeah. some used because he didn't have the money and we weren't having the money to pay for it. And so it was like, you know, we got to just get through this with this and then we go win with it. And it's like, okay, now we just, you know, we just screwed ourselves now. Now we got to go bigger and better. Yeah, because now we got to actually build it like real yeah. perfect. That's cool, though. And one thing that I noticed about what you were saying there, Rick, was that um, you don't always have to have exactly what you're looking for to make it work. No. Like, and that's a, a true fact in any type of off-road racing is that when you're out there, um, you could use aluminum foil and duct tape, and as long as it gets across the finish line, you're going to, you know, have I a did, much better I chance. I did to get home from Baja. Yeah. Literally, the turbo blew up. We fixed that on the chase truck. We're driving back by El Crucero, and the intake tube blows off. Oof. And we don't have a piece of it. On the side of the road, somebody had cooked something in, like, one of them big, like, turkey trays. Yeah. I got some snips out. We cut that thing up right there on the side of the road. Hose clamped her in there, safety wired it on, got us... You know, it blew off a couple more times, but at least it got us to the border. We got across the border. We got Alexander Ford to uh, get us some parts. And we met uh, met Jordan at the gas station at 10 o'clock at night, probably, in Yuma. Nice. We you put made that it. new piece on, so we got where we needed to go. You That's know, perfect. But, but, yeah, it's not some a, of it. I saw the uh, 5600 car at the 1,000. Broke a rear shock, and they had they some hose, hose clamped a uh, Breaker bar or something to the shaft had solid suspension for the, but the finish, made it. finish of the race, made yeah. it to the finish. Yeah. Dude, that's so crazy. I love hearing those stories, man. I can only imagine the kind of stuff that's in your guys' story vault with that no, kind of stuff. We've been through it. I'll do what you got to do. The spring broke. Remember the spring broke on this? Yeah. At the 1,000. On Last the double motor ago? truck? Last year. Yeah, rear coil spring broke, and they're like, oh, we're done. I go, no, we're not. We twisted her back together. We put three hose clamps on it. We finished the race. Held Dude, the whole race. And we That's won. And we won. So it's, it's, it's unbelievable what. It's that fighting gotta, mentality, I guess, yeah, right? Yeah, we MacGyzered it all up, you know? <laughs> That's <laughs> perfect. You tell people when there's <clears throat> something happens, well, okay, well, you're down in Baja. Find out how you're going to fix it and mm -hmm. get it going. Hey, so uh, our, our massive audience back here, Kenny and uh, Lindsay, we're just laughing because you said uh, if, if our yeah if if our audience didn't catch that, he said MacGyzer. Yep, MacGyzer. <laughs> Sometimes you have to do that, you know. No, it's a perfect way to do it, though. I mean, like you made it across the finish. That's the yep. goal, right? Yep. Uh, all right, let's get uh, continue on our rapid fire Q and A here. Uh, favorite snack. And this is, I guarantee you guys have a favorite road snack because you guys Rice, travel a lot. Rice Krispie Treat. Oh, is that where you're going? Rice Krispie Treats are delicious. One of them things I got now, the Sweetheart Ropes. Oh, Red Vines? No, oh. Chicharrones. No. Oh, those are pretty no. good, though, too. No, the bad yeah. thing at Baja this time, Costco M&M Peanuts. Yeah, oh. Literally 
besides what was stolen at you know when we're working on the trucks before the race but i we we ate that whole have you guys ever had the kirkland the costco or whatever fries ones that are the pretzels with peanut butter inside them oh yeah, yeah. oh dude yeah. The, yeah. those are those some... were uh vegas dorino yep yeah whole, there you go whole, bo- whole bottle yep absolutely yep. whole bottle of m&ms for this trip and uh, you can't go on any pre-running without string cheese. String cheese for yeah, sure. Yep, yep, uh, yep. Supercross or motocross? Supercross. Supercross. Both of you guys are doing supercross? You know that they're having like 20 Anaheims this year? They're going to have a whole bunch of them. So it's going to be cool. You it's guys be the whole series? Pretty much, yeah. Um, so I'm going to definitely try to make it out. Uh, I want Ryan Edwards to get us all uh, into the Anaheim one, and we'll have a big old KMC yeah, deal him there. And, um, John, VP. Yeah. yeah, that's what we need to do, man. And then uh, they're going to have another round in Phoenix, too. So uh, it'll be cool to see because it's well, super Well, my crowded. luck is it's the weekend of the MIM 400 or something. Yeah, it, it probably is. It usually is. Yeah. Or, or some races that weekend. So. It, it, when was the last time you guys saw a Supercross race live? <laughs> Ten years ago. Really? I did. He did. At a year ago. Silver State? Oh, you went to. And then they I, went to Vegas. I got tickets for me and my son race and we went to supercross and we got there and we walked in right when the 450 main was starting <laughs> oh you barely got to see it <clears throat> that was the only thing we saw man who was the winner and that they night didn't even ask for our tickets to get in <laughs> they're like <laughs> you idiots just it. go in yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh that's hilarious uh, Tomac won. Uh, Tom, yeah, we'll see how they do this year man with all the switch ups and stuff i'm really excited to watch supercross this year uh Ooh, this is going to be a really good one for you guys. Um, and let me preface this one again. What other form of racing would you like to try? And we can talk, like, the those little weird speedboats that go through the swamps. I mean, we could do monster trucks. You could do F1, any type rally, anything. Like, I, even if it was BMX. I think rally. I think after watching some of the F1 stuff, it seems like that would be a whole nother level. Pretty phenomenal, right? the whole thing you know what i always say though and maybe you guys could expand on this though rally would be cool but um do you think you could put an off-road guy um whether it's short course or desert racing whatever it is in an f1 car and see any success because those guys are so precise they'd have to change their attitude yeah i think it'd be way different right you gotta be kind of a smart ass to drive formula one seems like but but the uh, the level of their precision yeah it's like you know, I mean, you watch some of the telemetry the speeds and stuff and on it is just like unbelievable. Yeah, like they can place the car within millimeters yeah. of where, like, yeah. So I always thought, like, I it, think there's drivers though that really can. Uh, a good motorcycle guy is a good off-road guy, uh, right? A yeah. Good, uh, well, Jimmy Johnson. <coughs> from yeah, yeah, that's a very true statement. I'm going from, I beat Jimmy one time. Did you? Yeah. In the little super Mickey lights, Mickey Thompson. Mickey Thompson. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Claim to fame, right? <laughs> <laughs> One time you heard that. Yep. Okay, good. Perfect. Uh, that needs to be brought out on social media, by for the way. For sure, for sure. <laughs> uh, hey, Jimmy, go way back, though. All right. Uh, this might be a question that's a little bit too uh, not PG-13 for you guys. Who is your celebrity crush? Well, only because we built Jesse James a truck. Yeah. Sandra Bullock. Oh, there you go. Okay. That's a good one. How about you, Jeff? You got a celebrity crush? Um, Blake Lively. I don't even know who that is. Is that that <laughs> country singer? No, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Oh, okay. She's a real nice looking lady. Yeah, yeah she's all <laughs> right. I don't know. Sandra was just, she's all right. when I was, I was on Monster Garage and she was there and she was just a, a regular person. She though. came to Laughlin. She came to Laughlin. She oh, really? I didn't know us. that. She went to Baja with us. She went, you know, and not with us, but with sure. Jesse and, but she, you know. She was at Laughlin whenever I broke my back. Oh. And then um, her It sounds like Rick is the one that's injury prone. He's like me. I don't get hurt oh. driving, so he don't know how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, I won uh, the Laughlin leap. He got hurt. They were trying. <laughs> uh, well, I do feel bad for him getting hurt, though. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a Laughlin leap thing, and it was, you know, one of them stupid things, you know? <laughs> Jamie yeah. Jamie Campbell just commented in uh, the Geezer Bros. Yep, there you go. <laughs> All right, this is the last question of the night, but it's the most important one: uh, chips and guacamole or French fries and ranch? 
Chips, Chips and guacamole. And guacamole. Yeah, I feel you guys. Uh, and it, apparently you didn't get enough after the Baja 1000. You had to go back and get some more. In I had Yonsko. more. I had me some shrimp cocktails. and had it all. Thank God I got pizza God today, man. All, <laughs> all right, boys. Well, thank you very much for everything that you guys have done, uh, not just for the Dirt Life and letting us come here, but for the whole off-road community in general, man. You guys have been doing a fantastic job for a long time. Uh, I appreciate it, and we couldn't do it without all the people that are involved in off-road. Yeah. That uh, support us and to help us out and to come talk to us. Yeah, absolutely. Like a lot of the people that uh, watch the show tonight, we really appreciate you guys tuning in and hanging out with us. Um, like I said, thank you to you guys. Thank you to all the employees for helping out. Um, I don't know what his name was. I didn't catch it. The Mexican guy that was fixing that truck, he helped me load in all this stuff, man. It was like right when we get here, just yeah. getting friends all, all right there off the bat. Go. So He's our longest employee. There you go. He is, really. Uh, he was a rad guy, though, man. He kept looking at me to make sure I was okay, and I was like, dude, I'm good, man. Yeah. So, Did you speak any Spanish to him? Uh, dude, I'd probably get myself in trouble. I can only order tacos. That's about That's as good it. as I can do. Yeah. Um, but he was a nice guy. So, He's a good uh, guy. Um, I, good. I definitely yeah. appreciate him doing all that really stuff. Good. Really um, we really appreciate Lindsay setting up the show. That was awesome that she was able to do that. Corey for uh, getting us all Corey? set up. Yep. And uh, everyone that uh, – at the, at the shop for letting us uh, come in here and disturb their work. So uh, we owe all you guys in the audience, we owe you guys a lot. So go over to the sponsor uh, deals page on the dirtlifeshow.com, and uh, you guys can get all kinds of stuff. You can learn how to get new sponsors there from Alex Stryler. You can uh, get sponsor deals from all of the guys that support the show. Um, and please support everybody that supports off-road. If you guys do want to get into a trophy truck or a pre-runner, um, you got to get on the waiting list, but feel free to give these guys a buzz, and uh, you get one of the best ones on the market. Uh, later this week, we're going to be at the Mint 400, as these guys are. Um, we're going to be having some fun at uh, Tech and Contingency on Thursday. Um, I'll have the opportunity to be able to announce uh, not just the UTV races, but I get to uh, maybe talk about a little bit about some of the big truck stuff. So it's going to be a first for me, and I'm really looking forward to helping out uh, do the broadcast. So that'll be cool. Um, and our next show, um, actually, I don't know if it's going to happen. We might have to reschedule, but we have pro side by side racer, uh, Braden Baker coming on. Uh, so thank you to all the guys that support us. KMC, Motul, uh, EFX tires, Zolger racing products, shock therapy. Thank you very much, Justin and Ryan for coming on the show. Uh, I think I said Zolinger racing products, uh, Cryo Heat, all the guys that do the metal treatment, and uh, solderweld.com. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys for living your dirt life with us. We really, really appreciate everything you guys have been doing for the show. I mean, we're already at, uh, I don't know, 4,500 followers. We gained uh, like 500 last month. So keep it going. Get us as big as we can so that we can help support the off-road community. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to The Dirt Life Show. 